Uh, you guys join me? Dear Jesus, we just uh, thank you for the opportunity to gather and um, we just pray for our country tonight um, for the eve of an election that is uh, definitely going to change the course of our nation. Um, no matter what happens, Father, uh, I just pray for mercy. Uh, there's people praying all over this nation. Second Chronicles 7.14, if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and get ways to hear from heaven forgive their sins and heal the land. And Jesus, we just uh, cry out for mercy for our land, um, for the people who live in it. Lord, we just ask for um, uh, your righteousness to be exalted. Isaiah says the government rests on your shoulders. So we just submit ourselves to you and your government as you give us wisdom, uh, give us discernment, understanding, um, revelation, and what we're here to do on behalf of the taxpayers tonight. And uh, pray, to you, uh, pray that you bless our deliberation uh, and uh, that we be productive in all matters. We approve the agenda without objection. I'm actually going to take item under new business item G and E, and I'm going to group, call them up to report on the chairman. So under new business item D and E, uh, both new county property for the Westmoreland EMS station and the Ogro Volunteer station. We are going to um, pull those up and do this first. Since it is a bit of time. Um, is there any objection to moving all business to the end of the agenda after the business? All right. With no objection, we're going to move all business to the end after new business so we can make sure our finance department is here too long as well. All right. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second motion by okay. Commissioner Jones. Second by Commissioner Milton. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approval of minutes. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Second. Klein, second by Commissioner Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. <laughs> Recognition of the public. I call your name up. Please come stand up here and take your name and address for the record. And you have five minutes. Mr. Kevin Baker. Uh, Kevin Baker, 424 Road. Um, I'll let my fine folks talk about the, the Latimer House. Um, so I'll beat that, that dead horse. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, proposed Westmoreland EMS station, and I was looking at some designs and the designs of it, and I don't understand why we're spending money to, to put in a fitness center and a full kitchen and what appears to be a lounge and dining facilities. Are we building a hotel or are we building a, a place where we're going to park our, our uh, ambulances? Um, I mean, this, this may be what all other fire and EMS stations are going towards, I would say it's awfully opulent. You know, and when we have people in this county that are barely able to make ends meet, if we're going to blow $4.2 million on a, a, a place like this to house what looks to me, you could fit probably four ambulances into that garage. Um, and, I mean, that's a little excessive. And the other part of this is then what do we do for all of our other Stations. We're, we're going to be, everybody's going to be crying, well, we, we want the same thing, and, and rightfully so. Um, I think it's just a, a little overblown. I, I'd like to, to have you all take a, a closer look at that. But also, I, I looked at the property that, that I guess we bought it. Um, I don't know if we're going to hire mountain goats now for, for uh, EMS personnel, because to me, it looked like they. Those of you like people, unless you're going to fill the whole damn area in, um, maybe I'm looking at the wrong parcel up, up in Westmoreland behind the, the uh, Dollar General. But it, it looks like there's going to have to be a lot of remediation on that land to make it flat enough to put the size building that we're talking about. Um, I think we ought to take a step back. Now, I'm all for if we're going to go ahead down the road, we're all aiming towards having a centralized fire department, a centralized EMS, if that's what the plan is, well, somebody should put the plan together and come before y'all and the public and propose it instead of piecemeal. And next thing you know, we're always upping the ante because, gee, we just built a Taj Mahal up in, West, um, up in Westmoreland, and we need to build a Taj Mahal over at, at the next place we're going to it, it, It's just, where does it end? And just because maybe other counties are doing this, I don't think that it's appropriate for some of the counties, especially when 
we have people that are barely able to take. And you're going to hear about this more and more is with the new reappraisal, all the taxes. People are not very happy with what's happening with the, with the taxes. Their taxes went up even though supposedly it was a revenue neutral uh, reappraisal. But anyhow, that's all I got. Thank you. I think it's bigger. Tell I'm hungry. <laughs> All right, next up, Mr. Mike McLaurin. Yep, Bob. Mike McLaurin, 102, T.O. The Trail. Uh, uh, we, we live next to the uh, uh, Lickery Creek School property. I uh, want to talk about the uh, trying to preserve the, the Brown House. Uh, a little update on that. The mayor has got, uh, got it all sealed up tight. Can't get into it. It's all locked up. All the windows, storm windows, have been taken out, been boarded up and sealed. The hole in the wall, where they checked to see if there were logs under there, has been sealed up. So that that's a good thing. It's been cleaned up around it. A lot better than what it was. It was just growed up. Uh, there's still a lot that needs to be done. Uh, I know I sent the mayor uh, a uh, an email asking. Uh, what about termites inspections? What about checking for the roof? I know he reached out to the historical society with MTSU to, uh, uh, to have them come look at it, and that's great. I got no problem with that. Uh, that. That sounds like a great idea. Uh, but but there's certain things that can be done now. We don't have to wait for them to come tell us that termites will probably eat this building to, to the ground or the roof leaking. That doesn't require a historical society to come in and tell us. That just needs to be taken care of. Should have been done already since it's a county building. I mean, you wouldn't let a school sit there for seven years and not have it checked uh, if it had a leak in the roof or if termite were in it, it would be checked annually. So that needs to be done. Uh, but uh, uh, again, I offer my services. I can get together a group. We can go down there and clean up. There's all kinds of limbs that, uh, that are down on the ground that fall. Volunteers together, we can go down there and do that if anybody would let us. We can go in and I, I'll be happy to meet a termite inspector guy down there, a roof guy down there. I mean, I'm just up the road from them. I can be down there in five minutes in my gator. Matter of fact, any of y'all like to go down there and look at the building, come to my house, I will take you down there on my gator. And I will go real slow over the bumps. <laughs> uh, uh, if y'all come at the same time, we'll, we'll ferry down there. But uh, I, I am a little concerned that uh, I know Fox 17, I don't know if any of y'all saw it, but Fox 17 has reported on this a couple of times last week. Uh, I, I, and, and I guess that's where it, first I heard about it, I, I guess they came to light that uh, I guess the finance department or the mayor's office got to looking into this, and the trustees from the previous administration is still on the list. Yeah, I, I don't know if you were going to pass that 500000 and in interest over, and that's when you found it. But, but, guys, there needs to be some kind of checks and balances on that. I guarantee you, if my wife, I would never divorce her, but she divorced me, she would be changing the names off the checkbook. I mean, that would not stand. That'd be the first thing she did probably before she even told me. <laughs> so there needs to be some type of check and balance for something like that to happen. I mean, I mean really. I mean, we're not talking about a couple thousand dollars. We're talking about eight and a half million dollars sitting there. I'm assuming they're in the same camp. But uh, we really need to do something. Go ahead and get this started and not, and not wait on MTSU to come check it out. Uh, but it, it, like again, if anybody wants to come look, I'll be happy to take it down. All right, next up, Mr. Jim Latimer. Come up. Five minutes. I won't take one. Jim Latimer, 1578 Latimer Line, in Peterville, Tennessee. Uh, I have fed y'all a pretty strong dose of history in the last uh, the last few meetings we've had right here, so I won't go into all that again. I'll just repeat that the men that originally owned that property that built the house were a big part of the founding of this country. The names of the Declaration of Independence, but they fought in a lot of battles. Boston, uh, Harlem Heights, Brooklyn, uh, Long Island, Saratoga, New London, once they were here, 
Kansas Station, Battle of Rock Island. So those men put everything on the line in order for us to fly this flight here. Those men put everything on the line in order for us to be able to go out and vote tomorrow and elect our officials. That's one reason the revolution happened is we had no representation uh, with England. We were, we were subjects. We had no representation. So that's one reason this happened. Uh, let me acknowledge again the generosity of Mr. Brown in giving the house the money to the county and uh, to, uh, to, to provide that as a, as a touchstone for the history of our, our country and our community. Thanks for the efforts in cleaning the house up and securing it. Uh, it looks a lot better now. There's still a lot to be done. But uh, again, everybody go out and vote tomorrow. Exercise your, uh, your prerogative and, and uh, vote for whichever party you support. But these men put everything on the line for this. And uh, thank you again for listening to us. All right, Mr. Tommy, open the ladder right here. I'm for 264 Hester Road. The man in the red zone of the property was my field great grandfather and Jimmy's field great grandfather. But I'll tell you a little bit about Mr. Brown. I met him even 97 to 98. I was in Florida for several years and came back. I met Mr. Brown. I asked him what he knew about the house, which very little. So I told them a little bit about the house, what I had. And I did some more research, and he became interested in the house and preserving it. But he gave the property to the school, and Mr. Brown was a Ken Packers old student of his. <laughs> but in my friends. So he, he gave the property to the school with the understanding that they would preserve the house. And that's all I'm asking you to do. Thank you. Okay. I have a motion to suspend the rules for presentation questions. 
Uh, I make a motion to suspend the rules. Motion by Commissioner Carr. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Jones. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. With uh, the architect and I guess uh, Chief Foss, be able to start off? Yeah, sure. Can we put something on the screen? Yep. Uh, I don't have a demand on that. Do you want to watch the truck? Yeah. If it's fine, I've got to do that. We don't have to do that. We don't have to so we have a uh, um, James Kevin and Meredith Barrio with Architect Shop, Architect Workshop. So they've been working on this project with us on a pretty tight timeline. Um, I'll let everybody get their copy real quick before we start into it. But the first thing that you look at is the last EMS station that we built. Uh, this project went through County Commission back in 2015, uh, was completed in 2017. It was a joint project between the City of Portland and Sumner County, provided a fire station and an EMS station uh, in the Portland area. So back in 2015, uh, that vote went through for this design plan. It was 2301, I believe. Uh, and so that led me to believe that that's the way that we planned on continuing EMS stations, and that's how we wanted to build them. So if you go to the second page, I can go over the space allocation with you guys, because that was my biggest job in this, is uh, to give the architects uh, an idea of what we wanted and what we needed. So uh, the top building uh, in the, on the page there, um, that is the Portland station. And so it's got the entire footprint out there, but the highlighted areas with the different colors uh, is the area that's actually occupied by the EMS personnel for living space, workspace, base space, all of these things. Uh, the bottom uh, structure footprint that you see there is the proposed Westmoreland EMS station. And if you guys look at those in comparison, they're very, very similar. <coughs> actually, the Westmoreland station is a little less square footage in each area. Uh, one thing that is different between the two is the PPE storage that you see on the far right side of the building. Uh, and I think Mr. Long could probably help us out with uh, explaining how that's important to use the ARPA funds that we plan to use to build the majority of this station. So if we flip over to the next page, just lays out the two different footprints and shows you the total square feet that we're using. Uh, at the Portland station, um, we're occupying 7,800 square feet in that building. Um, folks from Architect Workshop, uh, the current design plan that they have, we're a little over 6,800 square feet um, for, for the entire project. So that includes the extra PPE space, all the bump space, living space uh, that we feel like that we can get by with rather than going with the exact plan that we did before. Uh, the very last page, the only reason I included this one, this is a footprint of the latest plan over in Rutherford County. It again was a joint uh, project between Prepire and EMS. The right hand side of the station uh, to them as well as it's for EMS, you got the, the ambulance over there on the right and then the phone space to the back. If you notice, one thing that's different from us is uh, towards the top of the page is the six singular phone rooms where we're only doing four for our crews. And uh, one thing that I want to note about this station, they were building this station, had it in design plan, and then we're forced to move to a four shift rotation. The same thing that we will eventually have to do. So by the time they got this building completed, uh, it really doesn't fit their needs and it's a brand new building. So we've tried to incorporate everything in our building to the least amount of square footage uh, to be able to uh, fulfill the needs for now and in the near future. So, Mr. Poss, you mentioned that you may be forced to move to a four shift. Who would you be forced to move? Uh, that would just be the area, and um, that's that's the movement. We are the last large EMS agency in Middle Tennessee to still operate on a 24-48 shift. So Rutherford County, they're 24-72. Montgomery County, they're going 24-72 now. Uh, Williamson County, they're 24-72. Nashville Fire, they're on a four-shift rotation with their 12-hour shift. So we're the last big agency that's holding on to the 24-48, so which is great. And we'll do it as long as we can because it, it, it saves the county a lot of money. But when a paramedic can go work somewhere else really close, uh, a lot less hours than what we require out of hours, it's eventually going to come to that point where that we got moved. So it's my understanding that that's driven by the fire department's um, shift, which
which is the same. They're not the same. There's no fire departments in the area that work on a 2448 schedule. Everyone in Hendersonville does. No, sir. They work 2448. That's a three shift rotation. What do you guys? We're 2448. Exact same as Hendersonville Fire Department. That's my point. Well, my point is that all the other counties are going to 2472. I understand which that. Is so a that four probably shift rotation. wouldn't happen unless the fire departments. No, all the fire departments in Nashville and the other areas, they work 24 48 as well. So until our fire departments that support our EMS facilities changed, you guys would probably parallel them is what I'm saying. No, I don't think that we'll have paramedics to put on the ambulances if everybody around us goes 24 72, working about 800 hours less per year for the same money. So you think that, that the EMS will change before the city fire departments change? Hey, well, not, that's it, what has happened everywhere else. So, Murfreesboro Royal Fire Department runs with Rutherford County EMS. Murfreesboro Royal Fire Department is 2448. Rutherford County EMS is 2472. National Fire Department is 2448 on the fire side. Therefore, 12 hour shift rotation on the EMS side. So, I mean, there's a lot to consider when you're talking about employment opportunities uh, with shifts and the length between shifts versus pay and benefits at all works together to draw the employee. Right. So it could be mitigated different ways or, or um, created. The problem could be creatively solved. It, it can be, but I think you also have a safety factor there as well whenever we push these employees as busy as we're getting on those 24-48s, the downtime of the rest and the hours work, you know, it's uh, quite a significant amount. Higher number of hours of paramedic works than a, a regular 40 hour personnel. So uh, I think there's plenty of studies out there that we can look at the safety concerns um, and the benefits that come along with those uh, 24, 72, or 12 hour shifts. Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. The, the Rutherford County, this is a, a three ambulance Fire facility? Station. There's a one ambulance facility. Fire station. It's a one ambulance public safety building. And, and for the EMS alone, you said you had six beds, six in bunker? Yeah. That's what they do. For one answer. Okay, so now the 2472, you said that they work 800 hours less a year but get paid the same? So Williamson County right now, um, their pay matches our pay, and they're on the 2472 schedule. And I don't have those numbers on top of my head. Uh, Exactly how many days they were talking about the budget around 800 hours. But you don't know how many hours a year they were. I could pick it up by saying that. Um, yeah, I, just just so that I don't make a mistake. They work a lot less hours than we require our parents. And they get the same pay. My presentation was just on the space allocation. Uh, they came up with a design. I think it's a very efficient design. Uh, saving about a thousand square feet from where we were at in Portland back in uh, 2015 through 2017. Um, and I mean, that's, that's all I have. Any, any questions? I'll be happy to try. I was just a couple of observations. Obviously, we just think of Portland is a fire station with EMS um, commingled with it, and the city of Portland went in, I guess, Summer County went in with the city of Portland to build this, and so, that, that, to me, as comparing apples to oranges a little bit here, in the Rutherford County example, like you said, is a fire station with an EMS bay, singular, um, and I, I guess, the, I think, in the email trails that went around, the question was, on this one, these bays weren't big enough to have fire trucks in them, and so, uh, you know, the question came, my mind comes in is Westmoreland going to pay for half of this to build the fire station, you know, fire trucks in it, or what's, you know, this is a, a, the size of this, to me, foreshadows a growth that is happening from Westmoreland and its 400 acres of county land to build a department of residential new units, which will more than double the size of Westmoreland's population, um, as well as, I know the water lines. Uh, they increased the size going up to that, that Castanian Springs 
back page. Inch well, the, the, they've got a 20 inch running from Gallatin up to uh, Mount Vernon, and then there there's some pipe that will be replaced on the way up to Westmoreland, and then that will connect with an existing, I think, a 12 inch line that they have up there. My, my point is, I just, it seems, I don't know, I, I've seen the emails from Mr. Clark and Mr. Jones asking some questions, and uh, they got. Yeah, Kind of a lot of stuff he wants to talk about, but um, it, I don't know where the growth in Westmoreland is coming. Uh, but this definitely, it seems I was shocked on the price of this in the floor because I've never heard only thing I've heard on the price of this is around two million dollars the entire process. And then we come to this like a four and a half million dollar project I spent out about three weeks ago in price change, um, which was shocking to me. And so, um, I know that we talk about PPE storage, but PPE is going to expire. I don't care what we buy, how much we buy, it's going to be all thrown away in a couple of years. No, the PPE does not stop. Some of it does. Some stuff does. What we have, what this will be stored up there is not. It doesn't expire, and when it does expire, it is replenished by the state the DOC. They replenish that free charge? Yes. Not to the county? No. In, in perpetuity? I mean, that's what they done. The best is you know, your knowledge? Yes. We, have, we, have, we don't pay for that. I mean, how much? I'm, my question has come up is how much PPE stored, like what is what is being stored and how much space for that? I guess I see this as apparatus bay, but I don't know what is in the apparatus bay that they're looking at. It's probably more detail. So the dedicated that. PPE storage is to the far right, if you look on the second page, um, about a five by sixty area. Uh, that's big enough to stack pallets on shelves. So is that just just that extreme right? Yes. Okay. Right here. And then you can also use the the area behind the base during pandemics, uh, behind the ambulance, you have to for its abandoned storage during those times because this is the COVID station uh, that we have been talking about building for three, two, two to three years now. So we're trying to incorporate all that that we have been at one time had in two different buildings, very minimal space here to get all that brought back together. I've not heard of the COVID station. Can you go into a little bit of detail about that? Uh, there was one proposed down the Shackle Island area uh, that was going to have this PPE storage in it back before my time. And then there was another uh, PPE storage and maintenance facility that was proposed next door to our headquarters on Airport Road. But that was before. And is there a minimum amount of PPE that you have to maintain? for the entire county in this one location? I don't know that there is a minimum right now. Uh, our bay floor at our headquarters is stacked full of pallets uh, because our PPE from the state is sitting on the racks that we need for our day-to-day -day operations and supply uh, in and out uh, to run the 30,000 policy that we'll be on. have to have a reasonable amount to justify using those sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I wouldn't... Well, I'm just curious on that particular because I, I don't know anything about the... Yeah. I mean, we, we put it all out as pallet space so that we don't have to have expensive interior space for medical supplies and stuff like so that. So it's a pallet racking system, right. so you need a forklift too? Um, I mean, we could probably get something we can do by hand. Okay. Is, there, is there a regulation that states what the requirements are in an EMS station? Uh, no, there's best practices through NFPA uh, and through FEMA, uh, but I don't know that there is a, other than commercial building codes, I don't know that there is anybody that says you have to do this. Thing. So when they talk about a, a uh, toxic waste uh, shower issue or something, because mm -hmm. I know that you, well, at least with the fire departments, <coughs> that you can get stuff on you that, that's dangerous, I imagine we can too, in, in the situations we're in. Is, is that not a requirement? Is that just a thing? It's, it's, it's in the sound plan. Plan. I, I know, but it, so, is, is, it a, is it a requirement by some agency nationally? I don't know that it is. I just said it's best practice and the best hygiene and uh, to wash the contaminants. But we, we, we get into different contaminants and they're usually biological in nature or insects uh, rather than so where, where does one find these best practices? Um, I brought our exposure control officer. If you'd like to 
hear from him. Uh, well, Deputy Chief Russell Hosky, he's got some information on that if you'd like to hear. Yeah, so we'll, we'll continue with you and then we'll see about, about that. Go ahead, Tim. Um, in my my work, PPE is uh, personal protective equipment. That's the same, that same thing. Could you um, name signs other than masks and rubber gloves? What other things are there? That Gowns, high-back suits, that sort of thing. That's all it is. Because like with, when we go through a pandemic or anything like that, you know, you, that stuff's not going to be readily available. Everybody's going to be trying to get it, so we keep enough. We try to have a 90-day supply on hand at all times because that's it's going to take us a while to get that back whenever it goes out during a pandemic. I'm just visualizing how much space high-back suits gowns and um, masks and rubber gloves to take up. Um, how tall are these ceilings in that bay? Uh, they are sized to go and they have to be tall. I'm sure the doors are not too tall, but what about the... Doors are going to be So you're going to have a shelving system that probably goes mostly up the ceiling to store all this stuff. And I understand you have to keep a considerable amount to qualify for the harvest funding. It doesn't go that high. It doesn't bump up that area. It's a ventilation unit. It's necessary to go to the ventilation unit. So six, eight feet worth of storage, maybe, yeah. with a step ladder to take to access it all. It just seems like a, a lot of storage for a lot of PPE. Um, I wanted to ask about the bathrooms and the room, the way the room layout is. You got something different than what we see in every fire station in Hendersonville, which is <coughs> one room per shift. And if the standard is moving away from hot bunking, the practice of changing the linens per shift and the people sharing the bed. What, who was the first station to start that? Was that the Portland station? Yes, sir. Who recommended that? Uh, the MS chief at the time. I assume I did not. Just something you wanted to do? Uh, no, this is becoming standard practice across the state, just as you saw that Rutherford County was attempting to do it as well. You're saying it's becoming standard. Is that just because everybody keeps doing it? Like, is there a standard out there? I think that's what Commissioner Klein was getting at. Is there a standard out there that tells what is required? I think it's just general science and knowing that um, it's way more hygienic to not have somebody get out of bed and take a sheet off and then a couple hours later someone else comes and lays in that same spot. Um, our ECO officer can talk more about uh, viruses and bacteria and, and how they live and die and stuff like that, but uh, there are some studies out there that have shown that um, you give that bed time to be there without somebody in it, the germs, the virus will die, and then by the time you come back around, they're not there. I mean, rather than somebody coming to land in the same spot a couple hours later. I mean, we've been on this for probably 100 years, but something's changed. I guess COVID maybe brought that to light. Um, so, coming up with a solution for not hot bedding seems like there could be some more creative solutions other than to build four complete rooms that will not get used. The other three will not get used 75% of the time, but yet we're going to heat and air condition them. And, and then on top of that, we're going to give each one of those rooms that aren't going to be used their own bathroom, which isn't going to be used. 75% of the time. It seems kind of crazy. Point of order, Mr. Yeah. Going back and forth. Um, well, you asked me to be here to share our experience. So I, I understand that, but you, you just have to be available to answer questions when I give them. But in, in the middle of my thought, just don't. don't mind just finish your thought. You can just let him finish one second. Yeah, sorry. Um, the, the bathrooms, um, it seems like they could be shared no matter what shift it is one for the men, one for the women, and everybody use them because bathrooms. Can be clean. I mean, they don't need to sit on empty, empty, and have that all that square footage just yeah. so that's just a little side note. 
something to go along with the comment there. So the four different bedrooms, if you have, when you have two ambulances in there, you have four crew members per day. And that way, so about 30% of our personnel are females. So we have uh, cedars cohabitating. Right. So this provides a more private setting. So each person for that day would have their own bunk room and bedroom. And so oh, they get their own room per day. for that day. Because there's four beds in each room. So now we're back to Alright. So each person has their own room and their own bed each day. And then, so the room is used and nobody's even in the same room at all. No, everybody's going to use, each room would be used each day. By one person. By one person. So one person in a four bedroom room each day by themselves? Yes. Uh, I, I just, I mean, and we wouldn't need four beds per room until we got to four shifts. We could start with three beds per room. Well, I, well, I just, I mean, if you don't need the I guess I just, I'm just kind of marked here. I mean, if I get a hotel, I'm not getting a brand new bed. They're changing the sheets and I'm stepping in an hour after somebody's been there. Uh, if I go to camp, the same way. Um, if um, there, there's other examples of public use of there be, I can't be, I just, I mean, it's, it's just, it happens in public, so I don't understand, I mean, I, I try to, try to understand, but I don't, uh, having 16 beds for four people, um, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me, um, again, part of the reason, and, and why I've stained, um, Mr. Chairman, I don't get my question answered by the fact that you said you know how much you can. Okay, um, can I finish up? You can finish, it's not a good point. Um, bring it up. The reason I've stained before the commission is because the first time I've seen any, any, any plans, nothing, we didn't know about it. Uh, it didn't come to this committee uh, for any plans. Um, and so uh, County Mayor had been here since May. And so uh, the only thing, I, the last thing I saw was in April, I think, was maybe discussion about the purchase of the land, which happened in July, but there's no other uh, information presented. Uh, one thing that is on our agenda for tonight is under new business, the first thing we're going to address is basically a policy to keep something like this from ever happening again mm -hmm. because you know where we are today these projects should have been in front of this committee six months ago so we wouldn't have wasted three four hours from before the commission making everybody tired asking questions and stuff we never came to the committee process so it's just uh, so i appreciate your parent patience and bearing with us on on some of this information because this is all new information and so uh, as part of this process we're probably going to correct tonight so we don't go through this again moving forward on the on project um so I, I'm just looking. I, I've seen what Commissioner Klein has brought forward, and I, I just, um, I don't. I, I guess my question, I'll ask a question. But I'm going to defer it to Commissioner uh, Jones if you want to ask your question about the bathroom first. Right? Well, on side. So I just proposed a question about why the need for four bathrooms, even though there's four separate rooms, a community bathroom is totally within reason. You see it all over the world. Like, public bathrooms are everywhere. But multiple toilets in one bathroom. Why the need for four separate bathrooms and what eight eight different toilets and or yeah, urinals? Uh, the so women has two two toilets in it. Each each have one toilet, one sink, one shower. It's the same two, space allocation two. as the building in Portland. If you look at it, so in Portland we did community bathrooms and we did two for the men. Or Two toilets and one bathroom for men, two toilets and one bathroom for women, two showers and each one for each. So we just broke that out instead of it being community. Hey, hey guys, if we could have not the side chatter where he's talking, that'd be great for the audience in the table, please. I'm just trying to get clarification, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Say two toilets, two toilets. Sorry, so I didn't hear you. Go ahead. So they're, they're the exact same number of toilets in this station as we built in the Portland station, the exact same number of showers, the exact same number of sinks for the people. It's just a more private setting. Like I said, when you have uh, genders cohabitating, uh, you don't ever know. It could be four ladies up there, but it could be four. So I think it makes sense to have four separate bedrooms with each bathroom. I don't have any problem with that. I think that makes sense for no matter what it is. I just don't understand having 16 beds. I think that's excessive space. And I just want to make it very minimal spacing for each of those. Um, I see two toilets per bathroom, two mm -hmm. women's bathroom. Just Four toilets, and I'll see two men's bathroom, a toilet in the urinal, a toilet in the urinal. 
What am I to see? I think you're looking at the Portland station. Maybe. No, sorry. Sorry. Westmoreland EMS updates. I'm looking at the mayor's maybe the floor plan right here. That's right. the Portland station. What's this Westmoreland EMS updates? I made it. That worked. And there's updates on the handout from even that show. Uh, where they can have a question to work with. This one? No. This one? This one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We still have four dollars. So the yellow areas are the toilet space allocation. Mm -hmm. If you look on the second page. I want to be clean. Like you can That's the Portland station this there. One? And then down here is the like Westmoreland proposal like where you just have a single gotcha. at the end of each bunker. Why, why is the um, bay three times the length of the ambulance? It's not three times the length of the ambulance. Well, it looks like it. It's not. Two and a half? Uh, no, it is. It's at least two and a half. It is not two and a half. Ambulance is 27, the bay is 60, 60 right? Yeah. So it's about, so it's half. about, about half because you got to have enough room to get the stretcher out. You need another 10 foot behind that whenever you're cleaning and working around it. All the doors open up. And again, that's doubling as it's going to be storage space that we need, as Mr. Long says. Are these not scale ambulances? <coughs> Maybe not. I'm not sure. I mean, it's clearly two to three times the length. With the doors open, you could get away with a 40 foot bay if it was 27 plus 10. You got to take away from the PPE. Go well, no, you got door. You got two rolling yeah. doors. The PPE is on the side, so it doesn't matter with the length. I'm talking about the length of it. From front to back of ambulance, you got 50 feet here plus another what is this? Six feet maybe from here to here. Yeah. So, 62 feet. How long is an ambulance? 27. So it's two and a little bit. Two and a little bit times. Yeah. Two and a quarter times the size of an ambulance. Yeah. Long. If the park, you could literally park two ambulances. Yeah. With the stretcher completely pulled out, you could do it in 37 feet. That just seems excessive. That's got to be way to cut down the size of it. How many, I guess, ambulances do our other stations have? Um, on the two areas, the Portland station runs two ambulances and a supervisor out of it. Um, at headquarters, we're running six to seven uh, out of that building, uh, including the Nassau BLS division as well. But the other stations all have one ambulance. Just one The reason that we're planning this one for two is because it's the furthest away from any receiving facility. So when this ambulance leaves out, the one ambulance is there now, uh, it takes at least two hours to do a turnaround. So the amount of time it's spending outside of this area to take care of the people is growing instead of growth. And so we're going to need another one up there uh, in the very near future to keep, uh, keep being able to respond on time to people. You say two hour turnaround, like, because where, where, this is right around the corner from the current station seven, correct? From yes, that yeah. So is that coming from the home, like going to Nashville to drop it off, or even just to come? I mean, if you think you, you make a 10 minute response, you're on scene for 20 minutes, there's a half hour, you got a half hour job even to just scout. And so there's an hour pretty much gone, and then you're in the hospital for 20, 30 minutes. So Two hours by the time you get back to the station, roughly, on that race. And that's not going to Nashville. No, that's not going to That's just staying in Kelly. That's right. Some regional or some regional Hendersonville, or even over to uh, Portland, we're pretty standing there. That's still a pretty good job. <coughs> What is the um, area between the rims with the arrows pointing? Those are the locker spaces for the crews to keep their additional length on them. <coughs> this is the wall with built in lockers for every other one faces the room adjacent. Yes, sir. Mr. Klein, did you want to run us through this or any questions at all before you Well, I, I, I wanted them to, I mean, I can do whatever you'd like, Mr. Chairman. I, I thought uh, the, the presentation is not. Quite then, I have a question. Go ahead, Jim. Um, the 
sitting room and seating for six to eight people, what is that for when four people at a time? So I think it's down to six on the last plan uh, when you look at it, but that's uh, for the four crew members. And then if you have a student um, riding on one of those ambulances for the day, place it in the set, or if a family member was a stop by for the visit during the shift. Question to Question from the, the architect as far as like. Yeah, well, I, I thought he was going to do a presentation too, or no? Okay, okay. Well, then, uh, I, I had written the mayor a letter, and I'm sure you read it, Mr. Foss, because you were on the on the email chain. Uh, my, my first question is, why was it necessary to have three and a quarter acres for a 7,000 square foot building? That was what we were able to find in Westmore with prices we were able to pay for it. We got a good deal on that piece of property. I think it's got a elevation differential of about 50. It looks like a tough piece of property. Is it not 50? You know, it's, it's pretty level up there. It's going to be a good building site at the top. Yeah, I, I, I no, I understand that. But from the from the high from the highway from the Austin P to to the top, it looks like it's probably 40 to 50 foot differential. I don't have that number. Am I allowed to speak? Yeah. Number in my head, but. Yeah, I drove all around it. I did it. That's flat. Back to the Okay. But have we, have we employed a civil engineer to put it on the Okay. So we don't have a topic right now. Yeah. We have a survey. Okay. Yeah. Surveys. So, so, and it's got the topographic contours. And you're saying it's only 15 feet? It's 15 feet. I, I, I would be surprised if it was that. Okay, so it was the only property we could find in the in a strategic location. It was the best piece of property we could that we got under market. And the geotech's not done, so we don't know if it's solid rock or. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, my concerns about what it's going to cost. To grade that, we've got a vertical cut uh, that I'm sure we're going to have to rectify uh, to the adjacent neighbor who is a, uh, yeah, it's a vertical cut. I will not. Yeah. It's a flat spot at the back of the hill. The whole thing sits at the back. So we don't, we don't have to deal with that vertical cut. So if it just caves on, we don't have to worry about it. Well, if, if, if the hill falls, I, I would imagine the city of Millersville is going to have a problem with that vertical cut. Westmoreland? Or Westmoreland. Uh, you don't think the engineering department's going to have a problem with that? I don't know what cut you're speaking of. It's a vertical cut at 12 to 15 feet high uh, at, the, at the back part of that, that. Is it an auto store or is it a Dollar General? What is that doing? I, there's a could, could, could you explain the vertical cut? What you're talking about? Well, if you drive around the back of whatever that store is, the the earth is a vertical I cut. Put a retaining wall. It's, there. it's got no retaining wall. Okay, it's just earth. It's, it's and our buildings up. put right up. No, it, we won't be up against it, but there there's a liability issue there. I think. I Close think, enough that there would be. Well, it's it's right on the property line, from what I can tell. The, the asphalt comes right up to it. And I don't know who did the vertical cut. Maybe it's the people who own the store that have a problem. But okay, well, just my concerns of what it's going to cost to maintain that that three acres, three and a quarter acres with the building on it. It's going to be an expense that that is much more severe than if it were on a half acre parcel. I guess is my point. And since we're putting the building all the way at the back, there's not an opportunity to, I guess, to sell any of it unless we sold in front of it. So uh, I guess we'll just have to deal with that maintenance cost from, from here on out. Well, 
Trustees. Trustees? Yeah. Okay, well, I, I imagine they cost something, but they cost a lot less than a maintenance company, so so that's, that's good. Uh, I think my second question was already answered. Is there any official documentation from a higher authority that gives specific design requirements for emergency <coughs> service ambulance buildings in design and built in 2024? And there's, there's not. We heard tow show, uh, general building codes. Okay. Of of, so. Yeah. Okay. Because we, we in in one of the mayor, you, you've talked about it, and I've seen it other places. The uh, the way. <coughs> I think I said uh, new state of the art industry trend. Um, when when I hear those things and I don't have physical backup, then I feel like okay, well that's just somebody's opinion of what what it ought to be. Commissioner Clown, if I could, Sir. If I could interrupt you just on your number of questions, all right, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. I don't want to pass by. Tosa Osa is going to explain what is required. For if you want to build this, then you have to do this for safety reasons. But as far as standards for an EMS, what you're searching for, mm -hmm. we have nothing. This is what they want. Tosa Oats is going to explain how they get that legally and safely. This committee, I think our point is trying to get to what do we need versus what do we want and how far apart are those two features. I don't think anybody's willing to give us those two answers to where we can compare. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. not right for the taxpayers. Right. Right. I, I, I understand. Thank you. Uh, I had asked, and maybe you didn't have time to prepare them, but I had mentioned in my letter, oh, you, do you have them there? The, I mean, there's some information we found is on the benefits of cold bedding versus hot bedding. Oh, okay. Okay, that's great. Unable to get up here to tell you guys about it, but we'll share it with you. Oh, okay. Uh, where where I was going was um, how busy that facility is, and it's my understanding that roughly they get, or this year they've had about I think 500 calls, which is under two a day, or right around two a day. And we transported 360 patients to the hospital, which is, you know, a little over one a day. Uh, I stopped by Southeast, and they're busier than that in, in Southeast, and they have one ambulance. And so I'm not saying we're not going to grow, but Westmoreland has about a population of 3,000 people in the Westmoreland you know, uh, property. And so I don't know what the surrounding areas. So, are you planning to start with one, or so? Part of the reason that Southeast, uh, we got Scott in on so busy because they're responding up into the West Moreland area. Yeah, they're, they're next up for them. The same with the Old Road Station. Whenever that ambulance goes out, they're having to go to the West Moreland area more. Yeah, they explained how they they park sometimes on the Beth page. Increasing our system size to, to cover the base around. So, so I, I understand that. So, uh, you know, if if the city is <clears throat> 3,000 people, that's like 90 percent of the entire county. But we're going to have two ambulances up there. Eventually, there will be yes, a need for ambulances. Do, do you think you're going to need those right off the bat, the two? I mean, I did not plan on putting it in the next budget or two by any means. Oh, okay. We'll see what the bud, we'll see what the growth looks like up there. Uh, but like I said, that ambulance it takes it longer to make a turnaround than any other ambulance in the county. You know, there's there's four in Hendersonville, four in Gallatin. They can turn a call in 30, 40 minutes, so they can make two or three of the rates that the West Station can make. You now, there's a hospital in Lafayette, right? Do they ever use that? Very rarely. They just don't have the services over there. They're critically okay. Uh, and then um, I included a floor plan that that I drafted after I talked to the architect uh, and hadn't seen this one yet. And I don't understand. It's it's about twenty six hundred square feet, and it's got 
most of the same amenities. If we have to put four beds in each of the bedrooms, we'd probably need to extend it a little bit. But you know, in in this in this floor plan, one of the things I learned from architects is your hallways are the biggest waste of space that, that you can create. I'm also looking at the sitting room, which is very generous. The dining room for you know eight people when only four will be working there at any given time, and a very generous kitchen plus the fitness room, which that makes a lot of sense to me. I I just I don't understand number one how four four human beings in two trucks can take up. 7,000 square feet, and I, I I don't understand how that square footage can cost $500 a square foot. You know, I, I have talked to builders, developers, a good house right now is going to cost you $250 a square feet, and usually houses are more expensive than a shell type building. Now, this, this has a lot of living amenities in it, so... You know, the budget I came up with, rather than using $140 a square foot, which is what the industrial commercial builders told me to use, I used 200 in a lot of the living spaces, I used 250 I just don't understand $500 a square foot. And I really have to push back on that because I just, I, I don't know what we could be doing in this building that would cause that to be that expensive. Hmm? Once we get the plane, we'll be out to close the and we'll find out what it is for short period. So that's really not, it doesn't be an issue right now until we actually bid on it. Whoever bids on this knows what our budget's already going to be set at. How do you think it's going to come back? I mean, be a sealed bid, so there'll be more than one bid. But they know what our budget is, is what I'm saying. So it's going to be up there. <coughs> That's the Commissioner Klein's point. I'm that, that's all the questions I have at this point. So I, I have a question, I guess, um, it's Mr. Kennan. Kennan? Kennan? Am I saying that right? So um, I guess for both the Westmoreland Station and the Oak Grove building, uh, my question is that, that's come up. What's possible? Is it possible to, I'm a, for lack of better words, de-scope these buildings and materials, or what's been proposed um, to, or even this one, I guess, Commissioner Klein is, is questioning the size or uh, availability of space or reward of space to, to shrink the footprint a little bit to get it more under budget, uh, in my words, uh, back to what I would, I'll say. I, I think the budget could be closer to three million dollars of ARPA funds right now. Uh, speaking with our finance director and. I know that I only saw $2 million for this originally from all the funds, and we've added only $400,000 in the last commission, being around $2.4 million in ARPA funds. We have $400,000 approximately unused funds from a jail roof project that ARPA that we're going to lose that we can allocate towards this and maybe some more change. So theoretically, we might have $3 million of ARPA funding for this facility. You know, and right now, it's proposed at $4.5 million, I think is what got appropriated by the county commission. So my question is, I guess, if it were to, at this point, be de-scoped in any way, or as far as plans, or like, have, here's, we have one option, one plan, and I understand that, um, I guess, Chief Pulse, and you just came up with a wish list, and here it is. And so um, there, there were no other alternates and no sides to discuss. So it's like, we just have one plan. So if there is an alternate two or three plans of de-scoping or condensing things at this phase, what is possible? I mean, I'm looking at the timeline, and I, Commissioner Klein has a question if even the current timeline is even doable um, at all. I thought it's the 31st. Um, without seeing having this meeting tonight or asking questions, you know, I'm giving input. So, is what is possible to provide alternate plans as part of that architecture phase, as part of going out to bid in the bidding process before December 31st for contracting purposes? I mean, is that possible to like, hey, He's like, we want to reduce the size of the bay, or we want to do only four bedrooms with four bathrooms and not have 16 beds, or if we want to reduce the size of this, squeeze things in a little bit. I mean, is that possible to 
come up with that plan as an alternate as far as keeping on timelines and bidding it out. I'm just, I don't know, so I'm asking the question. Because that'll do it, I mean, otherwise. Couple thoughts. Right here, there, that's on the wall. That's the side of the table. Of a what room? It's a sitting room. The sitting room. <coughs> Where the table and chairs and the TV and everything is. Just barely can go sit. Uh, we didn't break the schedule. We really, we stepped up in the first spot. The current shut the heart, backed out. We created a schedule uh, to give you adequate time to actually did it. Um, and so we would do this year this thing for bidding a week and a half. We're going to provide a 90% check set of design by Monday. So, Monday today or Monday next week? Monday next week. So, no, there's no time that we visit anything. Could we? Sure. But it's driven by your deadline. Well, that's why I'm asking the question. I don't know. I mean, again, this is the first time I've had a chance to ask questions on any of this. So, you know, part of my ignorance here. But, I mean, we, we weren't part of this process. Um, and so, we're trying to just ask questions on behalf of the taxpayers. We're looking to us. We went to a very quick space meeting today. Yeah. Uh, we didn't call it space meetings intentionally because we recognize government dollars for precious dollars. And we challenged them on everything. We also did that in a very quick time. We tightened it down, continued to tighten the plan from that. That was the concept plan. plan the color plan is tighter than now. So we continue to tighten. And to the final stretch of point, we had about three days to give you a projected cost measure. So to do that, I relied on my experience and calling multiple commercial contractors to build these kind of facilities and said, I got this building, it's about this big. Nope, I don't have a plan yet. I don't have time. What's the reasonable cost for square footage I should give them to be conservative? And that's how we got to that budget. Uninstructed form. First of December, you know how it is. You're going to know what it is. So you can have a lot of time arguing about whether I use the wrong number. Now, to compare it to a house, I have clients all the time try to compare a commercial public safety building that is deemed an essential service building, which therefore elevates the code requirements for the structure, elevates a whole series of things seismically, and drives a lot of costs up. And then it's a building that's used 24 7. Our house is not used 24 7. So this building is built out of concrete blocks. Money, please. Money. Yeah, money. Yeah. So I have clients all the time that want to compare it to a house. Yeah. Now, is there $500 per foot? I cannot believe we now have buildings that are $500 per foot. When I started this you know, in 2005 doing the Franklin Police Headquarters, we thought we were crazy saying $200 per foot. But right now, construction cost goes up an average of 7% a year. This is what it's doing. We're not in control of that market. So that's what it costs. The current building code that we have to design to, it has been raised to the point our structural engineer has to define not only for average length load, size of load, essential service load, which adds a factor of 1.5 to it. And now they have to design for tornadoes. But have two tornadoes. You saw what we were able to do with Sumner's Emergency Operations Center. We got that designed in under the budget that y'all have and got it built and it's still doing well today. And we had to find that for have five tornadoes. So we have worked hard for this county of years and we continue to. And now we're jumping into some incredible boots to make this happen for y'all. So, so I don't want you to. I feel like you're a little defensive, and I'm sorry. Yeah. We're not we're not criticizing no, you. No, you are. I mean, I don't you feel are. Okay. You're questioning our our skills and our time when we're jumping to the beach for y'all. And this is what we do for a living. We only do public safety buildings. That's what we do. So, so but yeah. well, well, I mean, again, we're not criticizing you. We're asking questions on behalf of the public, and so. We, 
understand that you've come into this process at the last minute, so I appreciate all your hard work and effort on this. But I asked a question on behalf of this committee, so we don't continue wasting people, people's time. We don't know. Like, we didn't know about this timeline and deadline. This got thrown on us at the last minute as well. This is a surprise for us. I mean, so um, I'm sorry you feel that way, but that is no intention. There's no slight here. We're asking questions. Um, we're fixing a process that hopefully is broken so we don't have this happen again, and so we don't have to put everybody on the spot and get these deadlines. Um, so, um, Commissioner Jones. Um, he mentioned a couple things I just wanted to ask about, just so I understand the cost per square foot that Commissioner Klein um, brought up. Um, the architect mentioned that it was, um, they have to build the different standards for seismic and for uh, tornadic type activity, winds and things like that. We understand that there's only so much a metal building can do. So when you're talking about wind speeds and things like that, like what, how do you, how do you justify the square, uh, the square foot cost per square foot going up? Is it different types of roof anchors? There's not thicker metal that can be used on the, sheeting on the roofing material, but other anchors that cost an extreme amount of money is the, the fix of concrete for the seismic activity, like uh, it's, it's engineered uh, beams. My brother built this house out of engineered steel beams. Are they thicker or have different anchor points or like how does that cost go up that much? If you could speak a little bit of that. Because several of us at the table understand that. We just need to so, um, it's greater, greater reinforcing for the roads, the roofing, have to meet the wind standards, and we'll need to But, like, what kind of fasteners and roofing make it withstand more wind? It's still a piece of sheet metal. You put extra screws in it? I mean, like, something's got to justify going from 200 to 250 dollars a square foot to 500. This one's masonry. This one's masonry all the way up? Okay. My understanding is masonry. This is masonry built. Yeah, because you're going to heat those bays and air them with those angles and cut the medication to. Very preferable to having a masonry because of the that. You said it was 12 inch wide? <coughs> the bay is 12 inch wide. It's like the size of the barn and the rest of it. Are they poured, poured block, solid, to fill the gravel? Or? You got to heat and air the bay with the animals because they have medication in them. So sure. you probably prefer them to have. Well, this was no air, just heat, no block. Well, I mean, for the actual medicine, it's got to be a certain temperature. So no, I said they poured block, like filled block. Yeah, they hollow block. So, solid grout is what you're talking yeah. about with number five bars. Of, I know that increases the cost. That yeah. is, that's what I'm asking. It's the things that, that cause the square foot is the price to go up. Yeah. Are we well, using an offer limit for this? Part, partial. Part, partial. Half, half, of half of it. Yeah, the original. It was all ARPA. It that's was all ARPA, and then we had to double the cost. Which came by the tax so. We know what's more to draw. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. We need something like this. I mean, Westmore is over there if you need it. I mean, we pay taxes to it. Okay? So, I don't know how to do this. If I make a motion to accept this, can I do we're that? At, we're out of session. Well, we, you don't know right now, but we, we, we'll get, we'll close it down. Uh, okay. uh, I don't even know if we need to do that, but Mr. Price, ready? Let me say a couple things. Usually when we receive bids, there'll be still bids and we'll receive several bids. And they usually vary, so many people may disagree with me, but I don't think putting them out of your budget is out of Because you've got competitors with each other that don't want to know what each other's bids are. We've had bids all over the place. And the other one I just want to say, if you if we move it forward in, you're going to look, have a big risk of losing the article fund. Because right now we have the deadline basically for the bids and everything things is back to be December 16th before we bring back the commission. Even with that timeline, if we run into significant issues on contract negotiations or other issues, it's, it's going to make this timeline over time. And looking at the architectural design time, it's much shorter than what I usually see. And we've actually even truncated a week off the of 
from three to four weeks, what happened. So it's a really good case. Other than plans, this can I direct the question to the final Yeah, I mean, or maybe you may have a final Um, Other than the four plans that we have designed here, what, how much are we into the architect for? The total cost? Well, like, how far are we in this? Uh, everybody keeps saying we can't change much or anything before the timeline. What all is there? Consider this happening other than the floor plan. I don't know the answer to that question. The architect will revise the complete floor plans, the complete designs, and the complete package to actually deal with, with, all, with everything. And he needs to have it back by the next year. No, he's really doing the impossible. Yeah, no, he's, 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 he's doing an incredible We're going to actually have it in the paper by November 21st. I actually have it physically down in the paper. I'm saying that we got a floor plan to move forward with. What other work has been done that we're going to lose or have to back up and redo if, if we were to change anything? I think what we're down to is not the issue of backing up with the architect. I think the amount of time it takes for him to complete the process. And right now, it's usually significantly longer than this. That's why the first architect probably backed out. Mr. Tennant, is this a flat roof? No. It's a rect roof? It's a single slope roof. A single slope. Okay. So it, it, it slopes from the base. What, what's the ceiling height in here? Yeah, that's that's good. I the lower we get, the less expense we're going to have. So, so, and and you said it's about sixteen over here on this end. Okay, turn it up. Are you finished? I am. I am. Thank you. Uh, as everybody is aware, some time ago, I. Uh, I would really impose a large facility. That night, I uh, almost didn't vote for this, but I, I realized that we're on a time crunch. I've learned even more since then. I've learned a lot tonight about this station. Uh, I, I think that we have no time. I'm not willing anyway as a commissioner to take a chance on doing nothing because we want to do something that is going to jeopardize the entire project. So I voted that night. I, if, if anyone noticed, I was uh, the last one in the queue, and I was the 13th vote to move this forward. It is needed. Now, the debate now is size and all of this, which at this point, to me, it's do it or don't. And um, that night, we were presented with a floor plan and a rough floor plan and an amount of money, and we voted on it. And I don't think that we can do anything. I don't, uh, now this, I would have to depend on the legal department to answer this, but I don't think that we can do anything. At this point, the commission has voted. I was one of the ones that voted for it. Uh, they saw the plan, they heard the money, and they voted I don't think we can bring a new plan, a new floor plan, a new anything without it going before the full commission again and starting this all over. So I think we need to, uh, I, I hate to say quit wasting time, but we need to quit wasting time and we need
need to we need to move forward. Mr. Lauder, I mean, if I was start driving them, it's kind of the same thing with the policy I'll go. We've got it kind of in the order of where it's going. Commission appropriations. It's like the policy I'm trying to show you tonight is just <coughs> here, push up to the appropriations back. Once there's appropriation and commission approval, we're really looking backwards at something that's already been approved. You're just questioning how it was approved. The question is what detail did the commission approve? And I don't know if I want to ask Eric if he has a different thought, but right now it's kind of questionable to even stop the project. Well, that's why we're in this conversation. Because the question was, okay, this happened. We didn't have the plans. We had nothing to be scoped or changed or have different alternates. So we didn't know what the timeline was. We didn't know because there, and, and if this had been done six months ago, we would have had a lot of time to even come before the commission and say, hey, we, this might be a good idea. Because one thing that's never been questioned, and I think a little bit of things that, is that we never questioned that we weren't going to build this facility because it's gone through budget for almost two years. So we've always planned on building this facility up here, appropriated the money in the past two budget cycles for this. So I just want to make that very clear. All I'm saying is there's, so, a, there's an appropriation now that's moved to the commission. So it's kind of really got a little muddled right now what process we're in because of the order of the Correct. And maybe Eric's got a different opinion, but we're really muddled right now because it's been approved by the full board and the appropriations are outstanding for it. Well, the question came like, could it, it questions be asked, something come in, and even though the money's been appropriated, you might have more options that the commission can approve it could be, if it can be done under the timeline. And the answer is it can't be done under the timeline. And that's why I asked the question, uh, the architect, because I didn't know when it did the answer for the record for the people. So, um, you know, that's no criticism. That's just a question because we don't know the process. So, um, but it, 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 it's a unfortunate situation because um, at the end of the day, it sounds like you're going to lose Two and a half, could be three million dollars of ARPA funding for this to leverage against it. Versus, you're going to come back and the county commission still going to spend a couple million dollars of capital outside of this if we were to not, if we were to try to change scope at this 11:59 hour. That's kind of what I'm hearing. So is that a kind of I think, it, I think it's you have a very significant risk if we try by backing up right now of not meeting the time frame because it is so tight. That Basically, the architect's plan, we're planning to have this thing back in time to bid before the 19th because we're going to be trying to put it in the paper on the 21st. So they've got for a little over less than a week. So right now, would they have to go back and redesign the actual plan and make the changes on all the designs to get back to me from my office to publish it to get back to them? So it's going to be gotcha. in danger. And you're going to have to go through commission again. Correct. Commission it needs to be changed. So kind of caught me in a pause from my last question. I really wasn't done. I was just kind of thinking. Um, the reason why I was asking the question about how much we have invested in this from work from the architect, and maybe this is something he can answer, um, is is it more than just the floor plan? Like, I don't see anywhere on here the electrical or the plumbing or the groundwork, the trenching that's going to take to run the electrical and plumbing from the from the city source, um, is all of that already done and laid out? Is all the excavation already laid out? Is it, or is it just this floor plan? Just a simple answer on that. Fourteen people are diligently working on their pair of all the documents. Yeah, it's a fun month. Okay. I have a question real quick, if you don't mind. Um, Oak Grove, since we're on, just you guys are up here, Oak Grove building, originally it's going to, you know, they wanted like a $150,000 building. They got told by the previous county mayor couldn't do that because the county facility had to be like almost half a million, half a million so it was like four, four hundred six thousand dollars Now we're up to over $900,000 because of the first of whole barn, I guess metal versus the wood. Commissioner Jones brought up at the last meeting. That project is it under the same thing? It's like you can't like change that like same building structure, but like if it's going to reduce the cost on that. Account, but I mean, are we still in the same spot? You just is yeah, it? Okay. Got some things got some, but I mean that's a very straightforward rectangle or three apparatus buildings and a small training room and paper storage office. So, as far as building materials, that is like that's detrimental. Well, we shouldn't be in the mouth. 
six, four to six months ago at least, if we're going to talk. It should, if we've had this direction, we should have started with the concept, with the architect, and with alternatives through this committee, bid it with alternatives, and then come back and put alternatives out. But we're not designed that way right now, and we're pretty far down the road. Commissioner Fine, um, Just a couple of things. Mr. Chairman, I, we didn't have this at our meeting. We had a drawing that I had made that, that was about a third the size of this, but we, did, we didn't have this yet. This didn't arrive until a couple days after. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I, I, will, I understand what kind of a predicament we're in, and, and my hat's off to you. You guys are really killing it. This is a ton of work to do in a very, very short time. The only thing I would ask, Mr. Poss, I think your bays are way too wide for an eight-foot vehicle. If, unless there's a shear wall issue for the wind load that you're talking about, Mr. Cannon, if I, I think it would it would save substantially if we cut, you know, something off. If we if we narrowed this up, but I'll I'll leave that up to your experience. You you're working with the structural engineers. If Mr. Poss can see his way clear to, and these are eight foot wide vehicles, and we're talking about a 20 foot wide bay, so that's 10 feet on each side. Is that right? 12, 12, uh, six feet on each side. I don't know that that isn't more than you need, but I'm not, I'm not an EMT, so that would be one way that we could simply cut some cost out of it. Leave that up to you, Commissioner General. Um, I'll be honest. I'm just really angry. The experts uh, in finance, um, the architect himself, everybody's saying this is where we should have been four to six months ago. Yet we didn't have the opportunity to be here four to six months ago. This was done wrong. I feel like. I mean, somebody, somebody should be reprimanded, reprimanded for this. This this is not done the right way, and my constituents, I'm angry for them because now we're wasting money because we didn't bring options forward to choose what we wanted. We let it go outside of committee, and we're here with our backs up against the wall at the 11th hour being forced to approve what's stuck in front of us. That is not the way government should work. But it does here. We're not doing it the right way for a committee. I'm not saying West Warren doesn't deserve this or doesn't need this. They absolutely do. They're growing. They just sold a 400 acre farm. They're gonna put 1,200 houses on it. It's growing. But the way it's being done is not transparent and citizens should be up in arms about this. It's ridiculous. Anything else? Oh, yeah, I to, to add to that, the mayor did not come in June, July, August, September, and October. Five months. We're still saying between four and six months of the timeline. This had us should have been brought June, July, August, September, October, and we wouldn't have to spend four million dollars. So he should have to answer citizens for that. So you know his email. Mr. Jones, I have to question you to ask the mayor why wasn't this brought before the committee? Why weren't you at any of the meetings? So they could have the last, last minute or wasn't that our emergency? Well, the timeline that I gave y'all in several different reports, if, uh, if we go to that timeline, the property was identified in Westmoreland, appraisal was completed February of 2024, PO was obtained, paid, uh, February 5th, 2024, uh, worked on negotiations on the property. The closing on the property occurred in July. Uh, the request for qualifications was issued in July for the architectural and engineering services for the Westmoreland Station. Uh, responses were due August 8th, 2024. Uh, we had one firm that was selected. Unfortunately, they came in uh, wanting to charge us $600,000 six million dollars for the building uh, said no that's that's too expensive i know we can do better so respectfully uh, mr mayor uh, 
Well, so that's my question. Uh, you you asked for the timeline. I'm giving you the timeline. I, I didn't ask for the timeline. I said, okay. why wasn't it brought here? Well, this explains. You yeah. said that they brought forth something that cost too much. What were they bidding? What were they quoting? We didn't give it to them. It never came here for us to give to them to quote. Well, Six million dollars, it wasn't worth bringing anywhere. I but understand we that, the but the rush. need had to come here first for them to bid whatever they're going to bid. The cart was put before the horse. Concept. Whose concept? Their concept. Who's they? The TMP. Right here, the tender report. How did they know what we needed? That was the estimate that they had given us. How did they know what we needed? That was based on what was given to them. There's the problem. That was given to somebody beside this committee. You should have come to the committee. The error needs to be recognized so it's not replicated. At that point is where we went off the rails. Yeah. Hey, Lily. I don't need to get a whole timeline. I wanted to make a point because my citizens demanded of me. Uh, you're Ms. So, Chairman, did you have anything I want to bring us back into session? I was going to make the same suggestion. Mark, we're getting way off what we're here to discuss. <clears throat> um, I, I respectfully disagree. It's our job to make fiscally conservative, in my opinion, fiscally conservative. But in taxpayers want fiscally conservative choices to be made when it comes to big projects like this. And if we're bypassing committees and having well, departments go straight to quotes, that is just wrong. Everybody should have a problem with that. Our that is our job. We're gonna People can't buy groceries right now and put gas in their car, and we're uh, spending four million dollars on that. No. We're going to be addressing this in the new business item. Thank you guys. Uh, we're done for the uh, Oak Road as well as the uh, West Wallingham yeah. Station. station. So point taken. Thank you. I apologize. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I'm going to bring us back into session. Um, that concludes uh, report of the chairman, both those items D and E from new business I brought up from uh, on a new on a new business, new county property for West Long US and Oak Road. We got the answers for that as far as uh, we're locked into those. So um, that is um, now for the county mayor. Uh, county mayor, you have the county projects and harbor projects and update for us. Um, anything you want to say? You want to just yeah, I mean the reports. I gave you the report if you have any questions. Um, the, uh, the archive buildings, advertising, uh, we've got the bids out for advertising. Uh, Storm Green and the Franklin Street project, uh, we've had to revise the bids. So, Henry Horn's working on that. We'll get something to you as soon as we have something on that. Uh, lower Station Camp, I'm not really sure. Wow, that's on the agenda. I think y'all would have suggested that a while. I was going to ask the same thing. So, yeah. So I, I don't know why that's on the agenda. Are there any uh, questions uh, on the Commissioner Klein? So the the archive parapet building that, that's yes. out to bid now. Yes. <coughs> Did it just go out to bid because I looked the other day and it wasn't there. <coughs> just I, went out. Okay. I, I can't. No, that's the archive. Oh. And just email me tomorrow or Wednesday morning. Okay. And, and the, the storm drain on Franklin Street, what, what happened there? There was an issue, and forgive me, I did not get the report on it. There was an issue with the bids and they were revising the bids. When, when did they bid that? Because I've been following <coughs> that matter in the I'll, I'll have to follow it for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Question for, I guess, for, for this evening one now, for the mayor. Storm drain in Franklin Street. How long has this been open or an issue? Do you guys which the storm drain in Franklin Street? How long has this been on the agenda? Long time. We've been waiting on the So it's been. I mean, it's been like a long time. I think it was in plan check in June and July, if I'm not mistaken, with with at the city of Gallatin. So it's it it's been, been on, on the agenda for a year, hasn't it? For a year at least. Mm -hmm. At least since January. No, because this is one of those ones that just came. I I presented three different prices in March, and that's that's kind of when, and it was already in preliminary design, and I think we went to the city of Gallatin maybe in April for plan checks, and it probably I don't know when it got out. I never got that from. 
Yes, right, so absolutely. item B um, and item C, keep under report of the county mayor for update. Item D, we're going to just remove um, without objection from next month. Um, let me write that from the agenda. Any other questions so we can move on from the county mayor or one of our or the uh, capital projects, our projects update? Um, David, did you want to, so I'll wait until we get to do business A if you want to, or to get ready to get there. So, if you want, so We'll move on to uh, new business item A, construction and renovation of county-owned buildings, including any leasehold improvements policy. Uh, I make the motion for discussion. You have a second? Certainly. All right. Second by Commissioner Clark. Uh, all favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, Mr. Long, uh, finance director, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. If, if any of you commissioners have watched the meeting with such as the opioid committee, in finance we actually send a one of our grant accountants, Dustin, to the opioid committee. Based on this policy, it's kind of designed loosely, and I'll go through, through with it, Amanda. It basically would have the grant accountant position that's now vacant, um, slash project manager that we work with, the requester of these large projects to get a plan together to basically bring to gen ops. So if you kind of read through here, what it, what it tells you is anything, and we're only talking about projects, major projects, projects over $50,000, projects that require an architect, which is generally over $50,000 unless they, um, Significantly impact, you know, the structure of the sale, such as the mechanical or electrical structure, or and all construction projects, which you know those by the are almost always good thing. For so right now it's twenty-five thousand dollars. Where we have it, twenty-five thousand dollars is your bid limit, and that would stay the same. So, for instance, if it was a renovation or repair under twenty-five thousand from the sheriff of jail, what they do right now is their maintenance or their staff contact purchasing, and we help them bid it. We go to the state for bid. Uh, this, since this is a committee, I would recommend sticking to the 50, everything under 25 or quotable. I would not recommend the, running through your committee process because you'll have an unworkable committee process really quickly. And the 50,000 were my recommendation to start and kind of follow it for six months to a year to see if it's actually too low and you end up with so many projects you can't get them through here. But the way this would work, you would start with the concepts. And if you, if you start with the, the beginning after the top, you basically would have an initial concept that would come from the mayor or whomever, they would send out a um, plan that gave you kind of the ideal of these seven things and basically what, what's going on, what you're wanting to do. <clears throat> we would receive it, we'd get in good order, make sure it's in good shape, and then both the requester and the person from finance, the grant accountant, which we're going to hire another one to go to this, and we'd be down here in front of the committee to answer questions about exactly what you're wanting, constru wanting to construct. At that point, Jen Ops would work with the mayor or whomever and the, and the grant accountant to determine what you want to send out the architect if there's different options, if you're in agreement with the size. And then the next the next thing down here, if you read under architects, it would basically, at that point, once it's locked down, uh, we would go out to get the quotes on the architects per statute and then work forward to get your actual um, budget for the architect. Then so, after, excuse me. Go ahead. Okay, then you have basically the phase where you have the architect design and bid just like we do now, you'd have the bid phase. And then after the bid phase, it would actually come back here with cost to look at the different options and what you have. At the award, between the award phase, it would go back to the county commission for the actual budget at that point. So basically, one of the concerns that Mr. Tim had, Mr. Johnson, was actually by giving the contractors the amount available, does that hurt your position? It could. I don't think it probably does significant, but I don't think it would be best practice to tell what your budget is. So I, I think probably this would, would deal with that issue too. And then you would have the construction phase and then, then, then the phase to finish up. So this phase the phase keeps the horse before the cart. Basically it keeps the horse before the cart. You guys have determined one uh, from an official or whoever determines the initial concept. They send you an initial concept plan down. The committee works through it. Architects decided to be obtained. You guys give a recommendation to budget. Basically in the synopsis it goes up to budget. You get an architect. Architect comes down with the plans, works through finance. We bid the items, the bids with all the options you've asked for comes down here. Then you decide whether you want to rebid, take a different option, decide not to do it at all, wait till later, or send it on to commission for the appropriation. So it's a good classic use case example of what we just experienced in the past two weeks. Um, had this policy been in place, we, we wouldn't have had any of these issues. You wouldn't have had any appropriations because this stage, you guys would have already talked to figure out what you wanted before it ever went to the architect. The architect would have got basically the uh, information from the grant from the grant slash uh, project accountant. 
this is what the gen ops approved, this is through, through the work, this is what they want to do. The, the architect would have that in the front. Commissioner Davis. Is there anything in here that prevents parallel action from happening that goes outside of this committee and then is brought to the floor and with enough votes you can do whatever you want to do. A couple of things should stop that, but let's just think about it. number one, the first code section I put up there basically is the legislative body is is oversees all these projects. Number two, you guys have adopted rules that says that this is the committee that does renovations and constructions. Number three, your private act says that things that go to the floor are supposed to go to the budget committee first unless you're going to violate your own private act to be considered. Can the county commission, this has been pointed out several times, 13 votes, there's no law preventing you, you can, you can do it. But if you try to adopt this as a rule and you follow this, this would be your best practices to kind of keep things smooth and orderly. Because if you look at your last county commission meeting, there was probably, what, a good two hours of discussion on three, these three, two three, buildings. Three. And then the other large discussion was on the park or the house and about the grants. So after this, I plan to send a policy request to financial management about grants that could kind of alleviate that. But this would have, if it would have went this direction, should have alleviated a lot of discussion back down to this. Committee. So this this will make our full county commission process a lot more efficient, Chairman. <laughs> I, I hope I hope we work this process. I want them. <laughs> I think it's an excellent document by the finance director to make it more efficient. I think if the commission adopts this, it will bring out the question if they, if the county commission speaks to it, has it been to Gen Ops? Because it will go to Gen Ops before it gets architectural. So the discussion tonight would have been had square footage and all this stuff. You, well, you would have kind of discussed what you wanted. You wanted this, that. You would talk to probably Mr. Poss and the mayor through the grant account to figure out what you want. You would have went to architect. Uh, with the different options, and then and then it would have came back here. Commissioner Billings. Can make a motion to approve the policy? I, I, you got a second. You second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right um, so we have CPAS that explains what committee's responsibilities are for, which are supposed to be firmed up by Tennessee State Law, right? Okay. And this. Kind of pulled a lot of things together, I guess, and reaffirms that and things. But Technically, I mean, that I've been monitoring when you were in all committees except for financial management budget. It's not a statutory We need to spend eight to 16 hours on the floor. Yeah, that's where I was going to go with this. Was, I think at the end of the day, this committee creates a policy package to get up and expeditiously get it through commission. <coughs> what goes the budget? Yeah. Or anywhere else? No, I, I realize it's, it's better. It brings a lot of different tools together to prove all of the points that it should be going through here. I guess I was trying to get, does it preclude other people from doing it any better than what it did before? You're asking, can somebody still just, can the mayor and the uh, um, EMS, EMS chief just completely bypass the committee yeah. and go straight to four commission? Yeah. Um, this would make it a little harder because it's a policy that it's according to our rules, so it'd be out of order. You know, it, it just happened, um, and um, at a minimum. But it's also a policy that we, if the county commission adopts it, thirteen votes. Like, I think this policy is a very good one to understand. This. So you're not going to have people um, just getting frustrated and no reason. So clear to the point. It is what's okay. It's a very outlined policy. It takes the best practice of state law on what we should already be doing anyway. But this enforces it because right now it's a disparate, just shotgun approach. Well, it's a ratified policy at that time. If you don't do it this way, it's not. I, I feel like it's people taking advantage of the ignorance, and this would keep that from happening. Tim, because it's right there. Tim, what you go right now is your rules say that this committee is in charge of this, this, and this, but it doesn't go back and give you details how you get from beginning to end. And one thing, just like the mayor mentioned at the budget committee, he did not want to run forward. Because he had a concern that because he had had estimates that came back higher, he did not want to run forward with the architects. You're running into the chicken and the egg again. So the question is, you're going to have to figure out which direction you want to go. Because when these large projects happen, we're required to use an architect or engineer and to actually get these costs. You know, we're estimating these dollars and stuff. Get these actual hard costs. We're going to need the architect to give us a plan to beat it. So that's like we would have been to go and beat it and then come back to you guys with the cost. But you would have had the beginning. You would have had an ideal. 
uh, more of an idea of what the building was going to be like. Going to ask these questions: how big? Well, but to my square. point, the uh, concept starts here. Yes, even with this concept before you even get an architect. You're not going to have a different room where we thought it was a willing building, and then the architect worked directly with them and said, "You want option A, B, or C? We want B. Great, that's what it like means. All the more. Let me be clear. Because there's problem. The actual concept would start with. A, a statutory office coming to finance and say, based on this one, we want to send you this concept two weeks before Gen Ops. We would go through and make sure it had everything to get to your agenda, sitting here with you based on what understanding we could get. So the concept would start with them, but it would come down to you guys to make sure you understand and willing to support the concept to move forward. Chairman, sure, uh, as someone who built tens of millions of dollars worth of building, uh, let me say, Sometimes there are constraints that are just like tonight, where we were under a time constraint to get this approved. I, I could support this on the floor if the commission votes for this, if it's considered a guideline, a strong guideline to follow. But there will be always these special exceptions like tonight, where we don't have time to go through and. and and actually, you could have projects bogged down in committee or even purposely held in committee for a long length of time and a longer than it would take to get this through. So if this is considered a guideline of what we will do and procedure that we would use, I could be, I could be supportive of it. Well, I would just, I mean, just to comment on, like, we wouldn't have had it happen tonight had this policy been in place. We wouldn't have had it happen from the full the commission two weeks ago had this policy been in place. I mean, so that's a... Uh, if we had time. We, we didn't in, have time. I'm saying there are always special circumstances. Sure, you can have a tornado come in and blow a building down. Exactly. And we got to build it first. So I don't think that's going to... I mean, this wasn't a... The timeline was here for the ARPA. We knew it, the time was ticking. So there's always, you're t we've always been on a timeline, but six months ago, we would have, or four months ago, or three months ago, at least, been, had this conversation. But you can't, I mean, the county mayor hadn't been present in five months. And so to address this committee, we'll go with that process. And so I, I'm just, I, I see this out, outside of an emergency like a tornado or flood or fire. I don't know how anything would be under it. I, I think about that. Personally speaking, I think that's why it ought to be considered a guideline. And that way, everyone understands this is what we do. This is the way we do it. This is the proper procedure. And then we can call that to attention at the time if someone is saying, well, it, it was an emergency and we need to bring this forward. Otherwise, you could have something stalled indefinitely and it never gets to the attention. And, and actually, the, the full county commission, um, my, my very good friend, Mr. Hinton in Portland, had a proposal one time to sell the courthouse, uh, this <laughs> building. And I think it got seven votes. But the county can commission, regardless of what the general office committee says, can do whatever they really want to as a body. Correct. And that's like, like outside of statutory. Recommendation and committee and the budget by law because of the Financial Management Act of 2012. Financial Management Budget Highway, I think, statutorily required. Um, but financial the management is not our budget committee. No, but it's, it's not it, even budget. It would be considered. Well, I mean, it could be the budget committee. It is. I mean, correct. But um, as far as like. I don't know if we're talking the same thing, Chairman Hyde, as far as what you're proposing, or a, a, a policy. I mean, a policy is a policy. I don't see it as a guideline or suggestion, but I, maybe you help clarify. I'm not sure if I'm understanding, or maybe I'm just. You could. I think Mr. Hyde's concerned about one emergency. So if you put up this top excluding an emergency, comma, all construction, that would help part of it. And then the number two thing, no matter what you adopt as a policy, as Mr. Hyde says, 13 votes can override it at any point. Correct. So it's really in technically your policies are all guidelines, so they can build 13 votes on the board at any time. But I mean, we talk about policies here, we want to have policies for employees, for off, like uh, departments or the commission or the opioid, opioid committee, probably having policies and guidelines to 
here's our standard that we're achieving for, but yeah, at the end of the day, state law allows 13 votes to add something to the agenda, to conduct business, um, unless you can get sued because it's not public notice or something that's of great importance or a monetary value. Um, and barring the, I guess, budget committee or, or highway statutory. And so at the end of the day, I think we all understand that, that you know, 13 votes, you can do whatever you want to. I mean, good, bad, and different, legal or not. <laughs> that's what I've seen up here. Um, but I guess, well, I'll make an amendment real quick to um, your motion, your second. Excluding an emergency, comma, all construction and renovation projects. Because I'll second for the sake of getting into you here. Right. So, to find an emergency, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to pause for effect, but I don't want you to answer that question. I, I've been here for two years. I've realized anything can be made into an emergency. We see the skies falling approach to every big expenditure we make in order to get around committees that we, we don't want it to go through, depending on who's in charge. We don't do things properly. I think policy is important. If you want to put some specific emergencies on there, if you want to have, say, aside from natural disaster, okay, but if you're going to say emergency, people will find a way to have more emergencies. I will amend my motion. I guess more of a force majeure a contract of like a an act of God, you know, barring, excluding an emergency, uh, I don't know how to phrase that. Um, here, 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 here I can tell you, I'm not always, like for instance, if we're in this building and the air conditioner heat and air blows up, it's going to be over 50,000, which you're probably going to want to put in an emergency. Sure. So, I mean, that, that, that's why I say when Mr. Hyde said I said, I said, you probably need to put excluding emergencies, but it, Maybe you have to kind of define what you're well, we already have that in our rule that said two thirds vote of any committee can add something in the commission as well. Two thirds vote can go ahead and vote on an emergency. So I that that exists. The worry is that two thirds to put on an agenda and 13 votes to. No, it already exists. That's what I'm saying. It's already there. So I think that takes care of this concern. Um, but the emergency part worries me because. Now things are going to be turned into emergency and held. Uh, I have a secret. Restate my okay. amendment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and point taken because I've been up here seven years. And emergency. Chairman Hodge been up here 30 plus years. 33. 33 years. This is my seventh. Uh, and this is uh, Chairman I heard Mo say from the floor quite often to myself. You know, this guy's falling chicken little and it's always an emergency. You're right. Here, this is an emergency because of lack of a policy. In planning. That's the only reason it's an emergency and no other reason. This is a building. The sky's not falling. They've got a building there. It's a fine building. It works. The crew's done. It. I mean, there's nothing broken. It's just not brand spanking shoddy. Let's be honest here. But I mean, let's be honest. Let's be real. It's not brand shiny new. And uh, all the bells and whistles um, and upgrades. But there's nothing broken. And non-functional that keeps, that keeps county operations from happening. So I guess maybe you guys can help me with the definition of excluding an emergency. But I'm not going to say the word emergency. I'll say I don't know if it needs to be a natural disaster, act of God. Uh, I mean, what are the those words in this force majeure? A sudden unplanned event. A sudden event. A sudden. Because this air conditioner blows up, I hear sudden. A sudden unplanned event. Where did this? Where did Policy come from? That's just one I read based on the best way that we logistically go through there. Where was? Uh, what else? Uh, that was that was just the, the policy I thought that would best bring the stuff through the committee. He's asking did you find your no, I didn't find. I wrote it. I wrote it. He recommended it after the last commission meeting, seeing how painful that was, in order to be efficient. Well, after after we did the. With, um, we ended up with the, the other grant accountant, which had a lot of the project management. After the last commission meeting, I went back and wrote a policy that would kind of uh, mirror how we're operating things in the Oakwood Committee fairly closely. So it's kind of a policy I wrote to make it work. I think, uh, I mean, personally speaking, I think what we, everything is questionable. Now, uh, I, I think Tim is correct. I've known Tim since he was gay high. And oh, I was he's like this. <laughs> and he's a very, very bright person. But let me say what's an emergency.
emergency to him, he's correct. It's not an emergency to me. And I, I would feel more comfortable if we put in there that uh, except for 13 members of the county commission asking that it be brought forward from a committee. That's a majority of this commission. I feel better about 16. So you couldn't get it out. I'd like to explain more about that if I could. Sure. Regardless of what you decide here, Robert's rule specifically says that uh, any main motion or any other matter that it, that's in a committee can be discharged by the commission. They just need the majority vote. So regardless of what you, you keep the policy the way you had it before, if the, the commission votes to discharge a certain matter out of a committee, they get the 13 votes, then that matters there in front of the commission. So your emergency can be dictated by the terms of whatever the commission thinks that emergency is at the time. I'll go debate the, I think it's 16, I put the CTAS on that side, it's an argument, but I've walked that on the floor or something. But I, yeah. I challenge that. But you, I'd like to see that CTAS. No, well, the uh, county. I'm talking about before it makes it to the commission because of the mayor sitting here, just the day to day operations in this building here, you know, we have thousands of people go through the winter, maybe tens of thousands, a lot. The heat and the air goes out, especially in the winter. This, this air goes out, it's going to be costly, and we can put temporary in, but we're going to have to get it suddenly fixed, and it's going to be over $50,000. So it needs to be an emergency, even though it's over 50. That's why I'm saying in an emergency setting event, the debate for the policy needs to be disregarded to repair or, you know, to keep things operational. An emergency usually defined as something that does significant impact of risk to um, equipment, personnel, or a major disruption of service. That's generally how it's defined. So if it's one of those, it needs to come so, so back, so automatically keep going. To Chairman, let, let's get off this incidental stuff. That's a way of shading the argument. I want a... Uh, I don't want, but let's say I want an EMS station in my district instead of the ambulance in a fire hall. That's a big issue. And I, I don't have the people on the committee that will bring it forward. And it's locked down in the committee. We're talking about big issues, not air conditioning that, uh, you know, well, that's Rinky Dink, that's not important. We're talking about big issues. It ought to be 13 members of the county commission that can move it forward or not. It can by operational law. No matter what you're out here, 13 of them can move it Well, I'm hearing that, but uh, I, I think I think that's very important, I had it not. I really believe going through a process and having guidelines is very, very important. I really do. But I, it, everything is really a guideline when we talk about committees. We, we just can't, we can't hold things here. They have to be able to be moved forward. I'll just interject. I don't see this as holding something. I see this as making, I mean, Efficient. I know you've created an efficiency ad hoc, and this is one way to make commission meetings more efficient. But I'll say a lack of planning does not constitute an emergency on anybody's part. Unfortunately, it becomes an emergency, is what Commissioner Jones was inspired up about. And so, or design, a lot there, are, we believe there are things that are emergencies by design to bypass the committee process. So, I guess their argument can be put the opposite in the defense to create that chaos or that false of urgency so that it doesn't go through a checks and balances process. But if that's the case, why not call it guidelines? I mean, at the end of the day, I, I guess it's like, a, it's like the OWL policy, for example. We didn't call it an OWL guideline. For that video, audio, video, we call it an audio, video policy. That the previous county commission approved and this county commission approved, they revised audio, visual, Policy. What they got? I mean, we didn't call it a guideline, but I mean, 13 votes of the commission. I mean, we can ignore whatever we want to or enforce whatever. Which I guess to your point, but we have set a precedent in my tenure of calling things a policy on like how obviously 
getting these meetings recorded was something that myself and Mo put forward, just like trying to get us emails. So we did a policy on county emails and a policy on video and audio use of recording all county meetings. But it was a policy, not a guideline. That's why I, I don't know if semantically we're just saying the same thing or just getting caught up, caught up on the word policy versus Godwin, I don't, I don't know if we're just speaking semantics here or not. I, I, that's why I'm, I'm asking the question. Just I, I feel like we are. I think a policy on the aisle or a guideline for the aisle are basically the same thing other than, to me, a policy is something that, uh, that even 13 people couldn't have a say-so on to move it something forward. Well, to the, the law director's point, which I've been lost the argument on the floor, but with 13 votes, you can discharge from the committee. To your point, you, I, I guess, I, 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 I don't know if you're asking this to this say the name of this XYZ guideline versus policy. We're talking, I like the word policy because we use that everywhere else, but to the point being, State law does not preclude any commissioner from bringing something from the floor. With 13 votes, you can get it on the floor. And I've been overruled on even discharging from something with the committee with 13 votes to get it on the floor. But this is a policy slash gui guideline as far as a process for going through the planning of county projects and county buildings and what's the county legislative uh, body's job in doing this. And I think the long-standing plan has been, in even the document that we have before I got here that explains all the different committees is the purpose of the General Operations Committee, which you were on before, and talked about getting up on the roofs and getting up in the jail, and you got to go on, and he climbed and inspected everything, kind of like Commissioner Klein reinstituted that, had been laughing for about eight years. Um, and so I, I, I just, not to keep beating a dead horse, but I don't see any, I don't have any fear about this. I understand what you're saying about if you think something's going to get bogged down the committee, how can you jumpstart that or, or you know, put the paddles to it? But in the same regards, we've had the committee process bypassed, and that's why we're having so many problems. So this is a something to at least get us in a right direction. Like, this is the process that goes through to make sure we're planning, whether it's a roof, whether it's a building, whether it's a parking lot. It's over $50,000 over this process of a policy that requires an architect, an engineer, bidding, contracts, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm going to give you definitions to <laughs> two terms and then y'all can talk about it. A guidance is a suggestion. A policy is the way it's expected to be done. <coughs> I, I'm sure there's been many legal arguments that people made a lot of money off of litigating those two words. But that's, that's what it is. A guidance is a suggestion. A policy is an expectation. So, what's your name? To Mr. Hyde's point, like, this is, if we vote for this and accept this, this is possible. This is the way it is expected to be done. But as he said, with 13 votes, it turns into a suggestion, a guideline, and it can go a different way. But it is looked at as the way that this should be done. It gives guidance to future commissions. Um, Anybody that has any questions can, can go to this policy and see how it should be done. So it can be fixed with 13 votes and changed to something different if something catastrophic happens. I like uh, uh, Mr. Long's definition of what an emergency is. Um, so we're on my amendment of excluding a sudden unplanned event, comma, on construction. That was it. We said something that impacts it. It impacts that is risk to uh, personnel, individuals, property, equipment, or makes a major disruption in service. Okay. Is that written somewhere or is that? Well, can you write it down? Yes. I'm going to make that part of my <laughs> Basically, it would be a risk to your um, personnel, risk to personnel, other individuals, equipment. Or major disruption in service, equipment or property. You can put people in here. Yeah. Risking individuals, individuals, your individual, individuals, property, risking individuals, property, or major disruption in service. Probably the shortest way to put it. Being close to the bottom. So, 
So excluding a sudden unplanned event that is risk to uh, people, property, equipment, or a major disruptive disruption of service. Uh, common. It's very interesting. The air conditioner goes out here and the mayor needs to spend $100,000 having his maintenance. I don't think you'd expect him to come in here to go through the whole process and be trying to No, that's not what we're talking about. That's not just... That's what I'm saying. That's not what this is about. And that definition covers natural disaster. Right. 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 We got everything. Any renovation over 50000 I don't think it's a renovation, but, it's, but it, it makes sure it's clear that it isn't. Mr. Long, I, I want to be sure I understand something. It says right here, any renovation projects over $50,000 Renovations that require an architect. Anything over fifty thousand does require. Right, but if you also if you're changing the electrical, mechanical, then under fifty. Structural, if it makes a structural change. Yeah. Okay. So so anything over fifty thousand requires an architect, and anything that falls in construction, which would be over fifty, too. It's just redundant, but it still gets the point. Okay. Okay. I say it's redundant, but. And the same thing is, I'm saying 50000 may be too low for a committee. You may want to bring that up after six months if you get well, is dated by a bunch of projects that go through the maintenance department or whatever. Is that under our control or is that a, is that a state you get the requirement? County, if you get the county to adopt this, you can change it up. It, the, the retirement you're thinking about are different. The 50000 for our architects is state law. The 25000 are being limited that state law. There's one allowing for a 50, but we're not eligible for it because we'd have to have consolidated with the school, so we're not. So we're, we're stuck at 25 for bids unless it's excluded by a sole source or a type of or something of that nature. And then everything based on our policy from 10 to 25 requires to be So it doesn't change any of that. This is just for things going through this committee that's potentially not probably going to be an architect. Okay, but are you saying that if, if we uh, made a proposal and voted on it, a resolution, that we could kick the 50 up to 75. If uh, you need to go back to the commission and do a question the commission to kick it up. So I'm saying you probably want to look at that 50 for six months and see if your committee's running smoothly. If not, you may even consider kicking it up. Yeah, because we know how much the cost of everything construction has increased in the last three years, and the, the 50,000 goes back. 15 years. When we start, when we start kicking those, when we start hitting those 50, you'll see how many things. I know. I know. Okay. Well, I'm glad to know that because I'd never. Well, you just <laughs> had to send back to the commission. You can't change architecture. You can change the stuff going through this. Okay. All right. Okay. But there's no hard, hard fast rule on that. Your your rules just says uh, construction, renovation. I think it even says maintenance. I don't think technically probably going to involve you minor maintenance.
to the Kappa Mouse but I, I, I said what we need to hear. Mr. Jones. I'll just add that if we don't do this, the result will be more meetings like this, where everybody throws their arms up and gripes about not having policies and doing things the wrong way, and there will be hours long meetings and hours long commission meetings where we gripe about what was done wrong. I agree. It just, it just wasn't done in an open and transparent manner. It was last minute. Probably nobody can ask questions that go through the committee process, and you're going to have to so tax dollars. Not a waste of time, in my, in my, my opinion, uh, because we're dealing with, with public money. It's not my money. Um, and, uh, you know, I agree when we're not important. It's the taxpayers that are important, not us. Uh, we're here to serve them, but um, I do agree with that. Um, but to restate my amendment, excluding sudden unplanned event that is risk to people, property, equipment, or major disruption of service, comma, all construction and renovation projects. That's my amendment. <laughs> all right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Back to the main motion. Any other discussion on this? Any other questions? All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Can we have five minutes, please? Go to full commission. Yes. Uh, you guys need a five-minute recess. All right. We'll take a quick five-minute recess. I hope I'm moving this a little faster. Okay. Okay. Next item on the new business is item B, Latimer Brown House Historic mm -hmm. Restoration. I have a motion for discussion. Second. Motion by Commissioner uh, yes. Jones, second by Commissioner Holmes. All of say aye. 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 <laughs> Quick question. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just have a question as far as we passed that resolution uh, asking for the $500,000 to be transferred from the finance department. And, well, David left. Uh, the second part of the question was, Getting started on historic preservation grants as part of a resolution on the ground house last month. Is that something that's in your queue or about? We haven't started yet. Okay, I would just. We're just trying to get the artist stuff out the door first. That's fine. As long as we can get a sugar. Where are we on that process? I actually got back to work today from the main guard. Okay, so Vanguard is back working on getting all the signatures and getting it back. So, and what's the next step after that? Like, do you get the top like? Once they get all the transferred. And then we can transfer to the finance board. We can trustee and find talk about the union. Okay. All right. I'm gonna, I don't think we have anything to discuss in this. I have a question about that one, that one question. What's been being done in the last two years with expenditures that are coming out of that account without trustees to sign off on it? Mm -hmm. Or have the old trustees <coughs> managing it? I don't know. There's been no activity on the so there's been no it's funds said, distributed in said, two years. Yeah. So not even the technology trust? The schools have it because the schools have they took it. They took a withdrawal out right before, I think right before the election. I have to look. So the been been documents no, are up in legal. I don't have them right now. Yeah, there's been no disbursements of no, those accounts in not, two years. Not under my administration because I, I, I can't pull any money out. Okay, and so neither can the school director. His yeah, name's not on it either, on yeah. the accounts. Yeah. Do we know for a fact that none others have? Because the other ones have been getting the reports, <laughs> not anybody else. So the reports are all Okay. They're in so the I, All right, great. Oh, I mean, I would have no other draws. Okay, major question. Mm -hmm. All right, without any objection, we're going to put uh, the Latimer House, historic, uh, Brentwood House, historic restoration under old business network. Commissioner Conn. One, one question. Tim. When can we get in the house? We don't have oh, access to the uh, schools. Get, get in the schools. I don't have access to it. I'd have to oh. the schools. Okay, so so a lot of the schools, uh, I mean, it's, but it's owned by both the county and the schools. They're both on the date. The house. The house. Yeah. Okay. The commissioner can't just go get access. You can just can't have a commissioner going up there. You don't have to coordinate. Well, it's with public property. You can go anywhere I want to in the county. Well, I'm talking about you're trying to gain access to the property. So so the house, is that the building? Right. Well, it's yeah. supposed to be over to the public as of this point. No, it's it's but it's not. It's a secure. It's a secure building, correct? It is right now. Yes. But it can stay secure. We I'm, not, go in I'm not saying that it can't. Somebody made an ask for access to the house. Yeah, and, and, and the reason is, is we've got citizens who are concerned about termites, leaky roofs, everything. And, and you know, if, if we're general operations and it's a, it's a county building, 
we should be able to go in and inspect it, I think. I, I would still say that that probably has to be coordinated with the mayor. Well, so I'm not up. saying you can. I'm just saying the commissioner can't go down there and say, give me a key to this building. I want to get in there and go look around. Okay. Who, who can? Well, under the mayor's duties from the election case, he's got oversight and care and upkeep of, the, of what's ever deemed a county property or improvement to the property. So he would be the center point to try to line any of that stuff up. Okay, I, I guess I don't, I don't, there's something I'm not, it's not clicking with me because well, if we're the owner. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, just like with the with the uh, old courthouse, I mean, we can we can line up the tour, just like we do with the old courthouse. That's not a problem. Okay. Thanks. So question. Yeah, Mr. Jones, you good or is that? Um, no, I guess not coming in here. Okay. Without any well, objection. Well, I'll add to that. Like, is there something that the county mayor can ask the school director to help us? He just said where, to, No. So it's not like a guided tour, but to where we could do it unguided too, just by putting us on the list of zero operations to have access to that house as a committee, and then we could set up our own uh, visit to evaluate it ourselves, so we don't have to be guided. I mean, I, we're county officials, they could, could trust us. I mean, it just can even help facilitate getting us access. It's a combination lock, so just like we have combination to the closet for the equipment here, and we have, you know, access to the building and different things, can we get access to that house so we can go as a committee and we'll make it a public thing, no thing. It's we jointly it owned. We, this is just like the library. We own it with the school board. Right. We, have to, we, we don't have to take permission, technically. That's why I'm asking. But since the mayor is... Commissioner Joe, what I'm hearing you saying, you want the combination <coughs> of the padlocks so you can walk in there by yourself. No. As a committee. We can do it as a committee. Have a group, a group of us. Uh, you know, to where we don't have to. Do you remember how hard it was to get a everybody on the same page to get a tour of the courthouse? It took like six or eight weeks. You know. Right. So a committee, a few of us could go in and evaluate, just like you've done on routes, just like we've done on other projects. Uh, even a handful of us, a couple of us, maybe it doesn't have to be one person, but even one person, but that we have access <coughs> to that combination lock. It doesn't sound like a hard ask. We're the ones going to be charged with uh, coming up with. You know, ways to renovate and everything. I think we could evaluate. Mr. Moderator Dawson. I'm, just, I'm not saying that's something you can't attempt to do. My only suggestion in all of this is it needs to be funneled through the mayor. I'm asking that right to, now. To, to, that's what I'm doing. And that's not a question for me. Yeah, I'm asking okay. the committee. Mr. Mayor, will you help us get access to that to that combination? Yeah, I've already said that. Okay. There's not well, the guided I mean, tour. combination. I don't have a combination. I'll have to call the schools. That's what I'm saying. Would you get them to give us the combination? To well, I don't know if they'll give you the combination. That's like giving you a key to a building. You know, the commissioners don't get keys to the building. It's not, it's, that's not the way it works. That building is jointly owned by the county and us. So that's, so that's, you're just refusing to give us the keys to that. Building so we can do an well, That's right. You cut a set of keys to the county administration building. I'll be okay with that too. <laughs> <laughs> you trust me? Yeah, you got. I don't know. I'm trying to alleviate citizens' requests that they've been asking about the well, know, evaluations, but if we have to do it as a group and, and have to schedule it through the mayor, and he has to be there, it's just even harder. But I guess that's what we got to do. So, <laughs> I mean, so uh, right now, County Mayor, you don't have a combination of that. You're not able to access. I do not have that. Our maintenance department is not able to access any no. of that. Okay. No, so right now, all, we have all of the schools. So I don't know what the solution is. Is Thank God, Mom. Thank if we need to coordinate a time to go out there, it sounds like our best option at this I, point. I, I, I think if, if we're half owner, the mayor ought to have the combination. Oh, certainly, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, so so anyway, uh, I, I think if you can get the combination, then you've got it too. Is that possible if you get the combination uh, so we can uh, do it towards? Uh, yeah, and then that we, you, we can schedule something to read in, <coughs> like we did for the Gordon Sun. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Without any further discussion, I'm going to close it.
the move to sell business okay. for uh, next month. Uh, item C, Millersville EMS station reconfiguration. Chairman Klein, you have a quick report on that. You we were we attached to you with that. Just yes, and my apologies to the committee. I I have reached out. I still have the one price, which was about thirteen thousand dollars, is what he estimated it would cost to do the changes. I've reached out to three other architects. I actually have a meeting with one tomorrow that we're going to go out to the Millersville. And then you'll be able to present that back. I'll to be the able to present that there. next next month, and we should, we should be able to do do all of that. All right. Keep that in the old business. Um, I mean, we've already discharged the debt. Is will not be on old business. Okay. Uh, are we? We're, no, we're done. Nobody's going to see it done. See it done. Okay. Um, item F. Health Department grant um, in your packet. Hope you've had a chance to look at it. This is a grant from the state uh, for storage. Um, at, and Mr. Hendricks is here. If you have any questions uh, of that, um, on we have two items. Uh, item F. Uh, a and G and H all individual health departments. So do you guys have any I'd, questions? I'd make, make a motion for Hal to come and just tell us where he's at with it. How would you mind coming up and, and we can second? All right, we got a motion to suspend the rules for how to address items F, G, and H. Mm -hmm. uh, here, one second by Commissioner Jones. All favor, Scott. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, how? Okay, um, I think there's a copy of the grant. elevation plan and the. Uh, oh, can you start with the grant? Oh, the grant. Any okay. questions for him for the grant or what, what the grant score is helping? Uh, the ELC grant, thank you, through the. Uh, uh, CDC out of Atlanta, um, and what we're having, we're noticing statewide and we're having issues in all the health departments in the drug room. I can't call them pharmacies because we don't have a pharmacy, so, so officially they're called the drug storage areas. Um, for, so, uh, humidity, for some reason, before 2023, there was no problem with humidity and drug storage. And all of a sudden, all of drug stores in an area have to be humidity control. Um, and in the drug rooms there are uh, freezers and refrigerators. We've got some freezers putting off heat, which is called the humidity. So what we've, um, we've rectified the problem in here is by popping a hole in, above the top of the refrigerator um, and ducting all that heat out there. Um, not the greatest thing to do, but it was efficient. Um, in Portland, we've got a, a, a dehumidifier uh, that they empty every other day, the nurses do, uh, controlling that, keeping an eye on that. Galton, we reconfigured our room and had a, uh, a negative pressure room, so we're pulling the air out of there. Um, so what this grant does is it allows for uh, additional funds to solve any of that problem, those problems that time of construction. Um, I believe it's generators and uh, drug room, um, how does it define drug room additions or drug room? Um, on that second or third page in there. Um, it's, it's just drug room changes or additions or, or, or stuff. <coughs> it helps fund uh, what we've already got. There's not a, a county match or anything. So it's just an additional add-on to help solve any of these uh, issues when they come across. Any questions on that? I'll let them address the status of the end as well. It will go to those two areas, generators and um, drug room uh, issues. Is there anything you want to add for like the status of the industrial health department? Yeah, um, yeah, you'll see the blueprints right there. Uh, we uh, believe we have um, Come up with a, a, a Are these the ones that got handed out? Yeah, that's yeah, just a handout. Yeah. The in the elevation room with the, um, the, the front uh, all sides, you can see there. So I think um, architects uh, and the engineers are doing their thing to bring us um, to start down to the, get to the specific um, material, colors, uh, interior setup. So they're they're still in structural design and finishes. Yes, yeah, he's just yeah. giving us an update. I will uh, 
I'll get myself and we may start talking to Cole. I've got plenty of ladies to help me with that. <laughs> Chairman Hyde had a question for you. Sure. How, how much uh, additional space uh, are you encroaching on the magnet school by the building of this uh, facility? I, I think we're coming back. Of, of, I'm going to answer the guesstimation. we back about 15 feet from where that original door is now, back and then back towards the uh, the, the hill. Uh, but the front is going to stay, the front two corners are going to stay right there. Um, and it's just squaring it up one more. So this building is the same width. The front is aligned with the existing front, and it's just the distance back. Okay. Remember, the original one had a little, um, we were not totally square on there at first. Yeah. So you got the original floor uh, footprint of the building. Mm -hmm. This new building, how much more towards the school in any direction does it go? 15 feet. Closer, closer to the school. On which wall? The uh, that'd be the south wall. wall. South wall. That's the only wall. And it gets well, the back, this would be where up. This original, this um, that's what we call the west wall, the south and the west wall, because the original would would square it up. Right. It was like an L shape. But yeah, L out. Yeah. It brought the L out. Yes, yeah, it was both out up front, and then what this will actually do is actually square it up the building altogether. Um, Now, well, um, from the wood front, you don't see it on there, but there is um, um, grading and elevation on the, I guess you would call it, once you pull in to the uh, immediate right, there could be a, a few parking and slots additional on that end of the building. It's towards the hospital side. Yeah, right. towards the hospital side right there. There's, uh, it's a grassy area there. Uh, it was really that original. Uh, entrance was on the end with the ape, the um, frame in the double doors um, were some somehow 20, 25 years ago they said let's go on the front this end instead of the end and I think that may have been an addition after the fact maybe in the 70s uh, or early 80s time frame or so no, the, kind of an entrance port to share kind of a thing. Yeah. 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 So, uh, we're going to go right where we're sitting now. Um, that's a, that's a, a real crowded facility to, for K-12, and I just mm -hmm. want to be protective of uh, <coughs> too much encroachment on a very small uh, campus. Really. Well, there was a, some plant, blue plant brand, plant at the can uh, architect had that had I don't know if Ms. saw that, but sidewalk between the two schools, a walking trail between the buildings. And of course, that was, uh, let's see, that was not necessary and, and it eliminated because of cost. But, you know. Yeah, I don't remember seeing that. Right. Question on the do, do you have any preliminary schedule when demolition is going to, could I call you and? Yeah, yeah, I'm making Gantt charts on this stuff. Yeah, so. let's get yeah, I'm ready for I think that's the next step. I'm not sure exactly how to get with I pulled that email from Peter today, the mechanical. Yeah. They're getting down to the nitty gritty with that detail stuff now. Okay. Um, like a month target, like December, January? I would, yeah, I'm hoping so. I, mean, I would like to demolish it building before December. Or in the December time frame, so we can start uh, getting in there in January. When we come in March, we don't do much with the weather. Are, are you going to be overseeing the project? Are you going to be the primary? Yeah, I'm going to be down there. Okay, so you, you'll you'll be coordinating mm -hmm. on behalf of the county with the state. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to my, my your mug everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got the uh, nurse and supervisor, the water supervisor, three of us. Somebody's going to be down there every day on top of it. Okay. If you could, if you could find out whatever you can, maybe we can touch bases okay. later in the week. Yeah, I and, yeah. and then I can get some target dates and, and just okay. at least start the chart. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, it's a question for you, but uh, he may need to interject. Um, so this, here we are, getting ready to start 
another project right here, um, the physical part of it. Do we have, like, in the bid, do, do we put a uh, project manager in the scope? <coughs> I, I don't. Be, be, I, I because the, want to do the Gantt chart, but I think somebody that works with the company that's doing the work should be reporting and at least looking at those Gantt charts. Yeah, and the only thing I can tell you about this is the state is basically paying for the whole thing. And so. Well, we're contributing like $600 and something thousand dollars more. We're not paying for the whole thing. Yeah. And like six million. They're making up the difference of what we do not pay. Right. Correct. We're paying up. Is, is that cash? Is that worth the cash? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're giving six hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it's been in the budget process for like over a year. Uh, I, thought, a year a I thought. I thought the land. No. Was, if you remember, it went from renovation. Yeah. To a full rebuild because ARPA came in and, and we discussed. We had the opportunity to wow. have a whole new building because of ARPA. So that's why I'm asking. We need to get this project coordin uh, uh, manager locked down. At the beginning, because every project assigns one, and they should be reporting to this committee. If you want to take that on, and, and well, it comes to you, and you provide it, what information, it, it, it that sounds about. like hell is. He's not a project manager, though. With all due respect, we need a. a they will have their own. They they have to to report to their people and coordinate their own. If, if they, we need that guy's information. Have they? Uh, have they hired a project manager on behalf of the state, or not that I'm aware? Well, the state's bidding it out to the company. Sure. Yeah. You're just talking about whoever the private contractor is in this building. They're going to have their own internal project manager. You just want to hire that person to be top. Okay. But, but we haven't bid it out. We don't have a contractor no. yet. No. So let's say ABC Construction, their sponsor, their individual who's over there, I can we can set it up so that they report. On every month. I'm, I'm saying that at the okay. beginning yeah. because I appreciate what you're trying to do and what you're saying about the Gantt chart and stuff. But we've got an opportunity right now to get the right guy reporting to this committee from the get-go. And that right. all needs to be known by everybody. But that's the way we all talk about doing it and we need to start it right now. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if we need to put anything down. I think we <clears throat> does it or if everybody just keeps it in their mind. Yeah. But yeah, if, well, if we, I mean, I think how how we'll work with someone or that contact and get information from them has been really good about contact. Yeah, I, I mean, until we have a contractor that's hired and contracted, we we won't be able to have that guy. So at this point, it's, sure. it's Hal. So that that's all I want the Gantt chart for okay. is to track, you know, when when demo is going to happen, when plan submittal to the city is going to happen, all all this stuff. Just so that we can follow it, the track. But you should not have to do all the no, what? Stand through the whole thing. No, no. it could come to you. Right. The project the manager, the site manager, who was, and I, I'm going to sit down with them and say, you and I will talk every day, either email or text or phone, and I want to know a sit rep every day. And and we get What's closer, happening? maybe we put together a vote of how often we want reports. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, um, like, once the contractor's yeah. hired, they'll do their own Gantt chart okay. and they'll present it. Well, uh, yeah. Make sure it's on our I don't think we have any more questions for Hal. Good to go. So we're going to move back into session item F. Have a motion to approve. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Elner, second by Commissioner Jones. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This should go to the full commission under the budget item F. I think this goes to the budget next, uh, Mr. Lauder. Uh, yes. So item F will go to budget on Thursday. All right, item G, um, motion to discuss. So moved. All right, motion to discuss by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, I'll just get the key real quick and ask about that. Mr. Water Richard, I guess this is a request from uh, the county mayor had request, sent a letter requesting a fee waiver from the city of Hendersonville. Um, and the city mayor of Hendersonville sent a letter back saying he wanted a resolution from the county commission. So I guess we'll just, whatever form you can put that in, that's the most simplistic form. Uh, do we want to, I guess, add, a, there was a request for representative. I'll, I'll make a motion, I guess, or a request as far as, uh, uh, I'll move to approve this resolution, if I can get a second, um, to approve this uh, and ask the county mayor to go present to Henderson Bell because he requested this. So, so second by Commissioner Jones. Uh, I would just say I asked the uh, um, planning director today, and he and Marshall Engineer uh, asked the city of Henderson, like, 
we're not estimate on, on fees that we're asking to be right here because I don't know. He said, don't quote me on this, don't hold me to this, this is just rough, but he could be up to like $24,000 of the fees uh, based on the size of the building and, and the planning and everything else. So that kind of gives you a ballpark of what we're asking them to weigh. I mean, this is the Henderson Health Department that didn't do this, so I don't see why they wouldn't approve that. But if they didn't, that'd be the cost of the project, just so we know, of course, if they rejected our request, it would be around, don't hold anybody to this, $24,000. So Josh would kill me if I held this. Hey, every little bit counts, and if the county mayor will do that for us, I would so appreciate it. So this is my motion for approval with the county mayor to go present just okay. a, the formal request per their, their ask on our behalf since he sent the letter to begin with. So, um, all of every All right. Any opposed? All right. We're doing you submit uh, to the budget committee or can that just go full commission, Mr. Lover? Uh, this can go straight to commission. I want to full commission on that. Item H, um, oh, that was G. 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 Item G. Um, and item H, um, make a motion for discussion. Motion. Move. Motion by Commissioner Klein, second by Commissioner Miller. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, my understanding, real quick, this MOU comes from the state saying that I guess MOU between county legislative body and county mayor that they were requesting since we're a sub recipient of their federal funding. Somehow they are able to extend this past the December 31st deadline as long as we have an MOU saying we're going to do the project, which I, we are. We've been planning this for like two years, I think, for our committee. So, um, so that's just kind of what this request is about, in my understanding. Um, so, uh, as as it's written in our packet, um, we have a motion. Uh, I'll, a motion to approve. If I can get a second, we'll push it forward to budget. Okay. Is that in the packet. Is it written? Um, the sample resolution is here, uh, but it's going to go to budget, so I don't know if you're going to modify it before Thursday. You haven't mentioned anything to modify or amend, so... Well, our version is a little different than the uh, um, budget committee version, um, which is county <coughs> legislative body, bodies. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make sure that all that's right. Yeah. So, point is, what's in the packet, I don't know what resolution form that goes into, but like moving our version forward to budget, budget on Thursday. Um, oh yeah, it'll then, be a rough out. To then go to the full commission, that's what I'm saying, you're going to yes. that out. Yes, yes. it's actually voting for some form of an MOU if it's necessary. What's in the system. packet what you see, but him taking it to that final form, because we don't have the final form here, just like we don't have the final form for the fee waiver. That's my point. And you, then you, you you're, uh, y'all are approving the form to proceed on with the resolution. Based on what we have in our packet, yes. On item A. I got a motion. I got a motion for this. Yeah, you have you did. Second on that. All right. Mr. Merrill had a second, you had a motion. He, I thought you made the motion. Oh, okay, my apologies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I second your motion. Trying to move this along. Trying to be efficient. <laughs> so, so. I can see Mr. Hodge failing. 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 She told me that the mayor was going to work on getting prices for those gates. Yeah, we're working on that. There's some concern with a book drop, so I got that email from Gabby today. I'm going to talk to her about it tomorrow and see what those concerns are. Okay. All right, so we'll get a report back from you next month and save this for all business, uh, Mr. Lauder. I wanted to point this out. I'm doing it on this round of meetings. Uh, the our standard rules and procedures for this county say that ad hoc will be for a year or less. So I, we're creating a lot of ad hocs, and I just want people to be aware of that as this stuff's moving. I'm, 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 this was created on this, this committee, I think, in August, if I'm not mistaken. I don't offer <clears throat> this one specifically. I'm just on that out there as general sure. knowledge. That five will be, hopefully it'll wrap up in the next month or two when we close this. Yeah, I think yeah. it will. Keep it on all business? Yes, for right now, because we need just a status update from the mayor on that. Right. Um, um, and Commissioner Boyd uh, next month. Hmm. Item C, uh, uh, groundskeeping for county building. Uh, make a motion for discussion. Motion. Second. Second uh, by uh, Commissioner Jones. All in favor of that? Aye. Commissioner Klein. Um, 
real quick over to you. I'll update on these. Yeah, we, several things have happened. Uh, the Draper House and the old post office were cleaned up by the the, the uh, community group that that is interested in in uh, taking care of of that stuff. Uh, the groundskeeping for the county buildings, like the old courthouse, uh, the old courthouse as we saw the other day looks pretty good. The children or people building needs some main, major cleanup because tree branches have fallen and stuff. And the biggest concern there, and, and I'm not sure, maybe Mr. Sittler can guide us, we really need to demolish that old house that's on the property directly to the east. All right, you know how I feel about old buildings, but this one's beyond repair. Do we want to go ahead and make a motion to do that? Since, uh, or just, do we want to, here's my thought um, for next month to dispose of some old business items and redirect in the positive direction. Draper House, Cottontown Post Office, we can remove from old business. Uh, children are people building. I say we put that as a new um, discussion item as far as demolition of that house and get some ideas for next yeah. month. Maybe you give yeah. us some time to present if that's okay. Well, we also need to talk about the building and what we want to do with it because... Well, that gives us, I mean, we, but I'll put that as a new agenda item under new business. Okay. Discussion, demolition of old house, old children of people building property mm -hmm. and what we want to do to that property. Right. Uh, I'll also go ahead and, and say the, um, I'm going to skip it, the old courthouse, item D, using the courtroom in the Smith Street building. Oh, oh. I, hold on. Item E, tour of old courthouse and jail. We've all done that last week. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are all together. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're not moving on. I have, I have someone to say something about uh, item C. Uh, that's not, I mean, what do you want to say about that? Um, you were talking about removing Draper House um, from the agenda. And we had some business on that that may not be related directly to this groundskeeping, but it kind of is about the cleanup and the bank and we've had, stuff like that. We've already started that. We did that last month. It was $10,000 to go to the budget committee. It's on their agenda for Thursday night. Right, but are we not going to revisit that depending on how it comes out? We'll just put it back on. We can put it back on. Okay. That's I just want to make sure I don't forget about it. Exactly. Right. I mean, we can bring it back. Okay. So, Commissioner. And just to let you know, Tim, I'm meeting a, a contractor out there tomorrow morning as well. To try to clean up the rest of that bank. Just, just to get a price from him on what it, what he thinks it would take. Okay. Just to see that we're within the ten. We did a rough, well. just ten thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah. Up, up yeah. Suggesting to budget for an appropriation of two, and not to exceed. So. Did it pass the budget? No, no. it's on your agenda Thursday. That, okay. that, that's why I want to have it there for Thursday. So that's why I'm just. Did, Draper House and Contact Post Office Commissioner Klein brought this forward months ago, at least August, I think. So. Just trying to dispose a little bit of the whole business. Okay. So we're not keeping this bogged down. Um, I, I, without a, so <clears throat> without objection, um, the discussion of old courthouse and C, item D and item E, uh, I want to group and approve those three items for discussion. I have a motion? Uh, motion. Motion by Commissioner Klein, second by Commissioner Miller. Um, I'll get the queue first. We obviously all went. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, work with us on that. Uh, to you, you tour those. We're going to vote on it. Uh, all right, yeah. I am opposed to tour the vacated courthouse space on Smith Street um, in conjunction with the sheriff's office. The sheriff met with us, uh, and then we did go to the old courthouse on the square. Um, so my suggestion is, I know that the sheriff has been working with, and we learned um, with Marshall Boyd in engineering. On desire for that space as well as Ron Blanton. Judge Blanton has been working with for the um, drug court on how to use that space for the drug court. Um, you know, explain the sheriff's offices. He's obviously showed us some needs there in their space for that and how you use that. Um, that. So, what I want to do is bring that back under new business as far as like those spaces and start just that discussion of like how do we move these balls forward. Same for the old courthouse. Anyway, you, you mentioned when we were on the tour um, last week that there was a water. Break, water line break at that street. What, where are we on that? Yeah, we just got a bid back on that uh, to get that fixed, so the work should be done this week. Though. Okay, perfect. So I know that was an issue when we were there. Yeah, the water's still off right now. I think so it broke the day we were going to tour it, if I'm not mistaken, or the day what's that? I think the water line broke the day we were actually touring it. I mean, that, I believe that day. Yeah, uh, right, or you right. got a report from the water company that, that had happened. Right. Um, so, 
point being, we've toured, we've accomplished these goals of item C, old courthouse, item D, courtroom. Is, is there anything being used for this, Commissioner Clark, on a temporary basis? You put this on the agenda, so this predated me being on this committee in uh, September. But is using the old courtroom in the Smith Street building on a temporary basis, or is there, well, is there doing that new that, courthouse now? As far as that was something that, that came up and, and I discussed with Mr. Sittler and he felt like we, we did need to have a spare courtroom. I don't know if he still feels that way, but uh, could you speak to that, Mr. Sittler? My suggestion for that was we seem to have cases that get initiated where the county's involved and then we have to do what's called interchange where we get a judge from another county to come in and hear it. And technically, those judges are supposed to come to us, and we were having problems finding courtrooms for them to use. The one that's currently going on, I think it's coming up in January, the new courthouse is able to facilitate them, but I do not know in the future. I'll never know when these interchanges are going to happen, and there could conceivably be a need for a courtroom without having moved judges around or making special time or forcing us to, have to go to whatever county's hearing is. So I guess a question would be, um, you know, in the, what I call historic, for lack of better words, I know it was built in 1939. On the square. On the square, the old courthouse on the square, I'll refer to. Uh, it does have that, the chambers, which was um, Thompson's old chambers, the panel, beautiful. You know, um, I mean, could that be something like that be used and utilized for this type of, you know, temporary. Yes. I mean, so that's a possibility as well. Yes. And that old courthouse. So. Either location would be fine. And I was well, not that it's in my purview, but it would even be something. I don't know how heavy moot court here is for high school, but it's a lot of court. They do. They've done my court. Well, they've done my court in Thompson's court before. The schools do use that. I've seen it. So, but, um, but it could be used now without the interference of uh, courts. Um, well, I'll just, as far as the courtroom on Smith Street voting, I, I don't know what, you know, obviously we just want to call, so I'll come for this committee since we're starting this process, hope to get this policy, but we're just going to get the discussions now. Um, that I know that the sheriff had showed us half the, that space for the, the recovery court and using it, uh, and then the spark where I guess they're wanting to go into Judge Gay's whole criminal courtroom to expand the sheriff's office for all the administrative and everything else, and so kind of go into that space. So, um, again, I'm not sure what the cost of that would be, uh, but I don't see any extra corporate space in that should we move forward with plans to expand the sheriff into part of that facility where the courtroom was. Um, there's, uh, there were three courtrooms in there, and two of them there would be, I guess, for the recovery court side. If I'm well, not sure that one. I think it was just one. I think the sheriff was taking the other two. Oh, he was one of the other two. I believe, I believe so. Because the, 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 the uh, recovery court came all the way to the wall of the middle courtroom, and that was going to be blocked off, and then the sheriffs were going to take that courtroom, all the offices in between. I just remember Judge Gaze being the cutoff for some reason, so we need to get a plan, and he said yeah. he'd give it to us. So. Well, before next month, we'll make on the agenda an item for the spaces so we can start talking about it and whatever plans they have for Marshall and our engineering. Yeah. We'll get that on the agenda. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Jim. Thank you to your point. I think we could just go ahead and discharge um, D for sure. And to, uh, because uh, D and E, we're, I mean, there's nothing else to do with that. We're, we're not, we're not, yeah, we're not even considering looking for, for a court room anymore because we've got a more established looking. Well, that'll be more, I'm going to put on right? new business, you know, basically a, a discussion for vacating Galaxy Square Old Courthouse plan. Like, we got a building where what can we do with this building? There are some options. Let's go ahead and get those discussions started mm -hmm. uh, in a proactive um, sense. Um, and again, just to clean out old business and, and let's start doing something here. Um, so let's talk about it. Let's do something about it. So, yeah. um, without objection. So without objection, anything else, we're going to bring, again, those two facilities, what can we do there? 
Uh, so I'm, I'm going to consider item C, D, and E as discharge from old business without objection. So we'll clear that off the plate. And that will not, those will not move forward in um, December on old business. Okay. Item F, reserve parking at the administration building. Chairman Hunter, you brought this up two months ago about like parking spots, reserve parking spots. Just question there. Uh, 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 <laughs> get thoughts on that. This is uh, just a little pet peeve of mine, but uh, and, and no offense to the tax assessor or the county judge or anyone, but when I was the director of schools and super, elected superintendent of schools, I never had a reserve parking place. I would drive up, and if the parking lot was full, the public had come to the Board of Education and took the spot where I used to park. I just drove around and found the spot somewhere. And so it has bothered me a little bit that we drive in here to the county administration building, and we, we're having more and more reserved for him, reserved for her, reserved for her. And even at night, I think people are afraid to park in there because if they go, well, you know, I'm parking in somebody's place and I might get a ticket or, or a code or something. I, I don't know what we'd do about it. I thought maybe just to ask uh, people not to reserve places. And then I thought, well, everybody and see what they think, but I really think we ought to move away from that because, for one thing, people think that we have a feeling of entitlement when we have special parking places, and uh, that's just my pet peeve. Um, I, I guess I'll make an ask, County Mayor, would you object to removing those signs? Bob, me, I don't have one. <laughs> I guess I don't know if we need to make a motion or, or meet. Can we have to bring this for the full commission, or can we ask County Mayor? Can we just remove those signs and just not? I don't think it needs to go to commission. Yeah. He is. No, I'm just that's why I'm making the ask. Yeah, I just I'll let the constitutional officers know. Yeah. Is that okay, Chairman? I think that. I think it's a great idea. I just had a question: How they ever get there? Just by request? Could anybody just ask? They for were the there beforehand, but I, I think what. Mr. Mayor, when you got in, you upgraded the signs. No, they were there before. Okay, they were upgraded before 20, August 2022. I just remember the old, they were brown, the white letters, if I'm not mistaken, those signs. So, if you don't mind removing those signs, the request of Chairman Hyde and the taxpayers will be glad to see that. All right, we'll move on. We'll strike that little business. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We don't have to ask for that. We can just put down the parking lot. <laughs> Item G, we're going to blame you, Chairman. Uh, item G, markings and signage for the new parking garage. Um, old business, I think, County Mayor, this is something you were following up with, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Or, uh, I, I, sure was, I was, right, uh, and, and, and I didn't make it because daylight savings time is <laughs> too dark. So let me make a point of going through that entire parking structure and seeing what some of the complaints are about it. And uh, I will do that maybe tomorrow. Right. Go ahead. Well, I want to make discussion. Thank you. I'll raise that. Uh, uh, so, what is the? I brought this to the attention that there's a problem. There, there was, there was a, 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 a complaint by one of the commissioners, I think, that there's not enough signage in there to know where to go. And 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 I did starting at Hoovering in the garage. Yeah, and I went in there and I go, that, that, and I don't even remember who it was, whether it was Terry Boyd or or Mary Janung or somebody. And I went in and go, they're right. This is this is really hard to navigate in here because you don't know which way to go. It's it's a narrow parking structure and it's not double loaded. That's what I'm saying. There's only one way to go around it. Is I've been up it once and I think is pretty. Self-explanatory. You go up, you turn around, come down. Yeah. Well, what and one like, side? There's not a. There's not a. <coughs> turn this way to exit or that way to exit. It's yeah. Only well, got one way to go. Once I did it, it was I. I was fine. Oh, okay. I understand. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna have a solution here. We're gonna keep on all business. Check it out. I will. We're wasting time. I will. So, uh, without any uh, objections, we'll keep that on all business. The only thing we're gonna keep on all business is item A, health department status. Item B, job and library booking. And item G, status for the new parking garage. 
Great. Um, motion to adjourn. Second. All favor, Jack. Aye. Uh, Aye.